guys. I'm hanging out today with uh, known on the streets as DJ Icy Touch, known in the clubs, uh, known at the stadium, oh. should I say, um, and then uh, you know known to his uh, family and friends as uh, Albert Mundini. Mundini. Yes, sir. Um, and so, what's up? How you doing today? I'm doing excellent, man. Everything's Yourself? good. Yeah, everything out. I'm nice. doing great, man. I'm uh, I'm I'm warm in this out here in this cold weather. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Out in this Vancouver weather, I need to get that toque right there. Dude, I've been rocking different type of, like the same type of toque, but different colors every day. Oh, man, I need it. Yeah. I, like, I like you call it a toque, too, not a beanie. Everyone out here is calling them beanies now. But I mean, I ain't got no hair, though. So it's oh, like, okay, yeah. it worked. Yeah, yeah. This is my way to kind of like, it's a camouflage. Like, nobody's got to know. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm white. I'm going to be bald in about, I don't know, 12 minutes yeah. here. So. <laughs> <laughs> I told I was at the barber shop today. Shout out, shout out Mike out at Wisdom Club, man. Uh, I was at the barber. I was like, hey, man, listen, um, if I come in here and you're like, man, yo, that. That widow, that widow's peak is creeping yeah, back yeah, there, man. Yeah. You know, don't even tell me, okay? Dude, just, just, just buzz it. Fam, just buzz it. Yeah. All right, bro. We're gonna do the Joe Rogan thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I, I used to try to like play myself and act like I could still do like fades and shit. <laughs> But like, like yourself, <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, you know, I was thinning out. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, cause I mean, growing up, funny enough, I used to always shave my head. Like I, I oh, like, yeah. I kind of, you know, I embraced the baldy at an early age, <laughs> even when I could grow hair for right. real. But like now, because you knew, because you knew it was coming. Because I knew I was coming. Like, I just wanted like, this yeah, on this one. <laughs> let's just go. Yeah, let's go early. But uh, no, nah, nonetheless, <laughs> I, honestly, I was doing it because the whole Michael Jordan's cool. You know, I was right. playing basketball when I was younger too. So I'm like, yeah, so I embrace that whole baldy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, and as of recent, it's like you know I'm trying to do a little fade, but that shit is not popping, dude. <laughs> You had that LeBron yeah, moment. That, you're like, yeah, I'm oh like, yo, God, thinning out. So oh, I'm like, man. I just like. Phew. I'm shaving it. Start like you know, hair transfusions, yeah, nah, roll gain. Nah, 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 <laughs> nah, 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 for me, bro. Yeah, man. So I just told my barber, I was like, listen, man, let's not hide, let's not hide the conversation. Yeah. You know, just, let's just, it's like if you got to kill someone, you know, just, just got to. Yeah. Just, just, just you go to out. Wisdom, right? Yeah, I go to Wisdom. Yeah. yeah. You know the boys over there, Wisdom? Yeah. Those are homies. Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually, uh, like, I, uh, I've known them boys for a minute, too. And then I, uh, I went to go visit there uh, a week ago and I saw Mar Marlon. Mm -hmm. and then we had a conversation about uh potentially uh, i do this art show in the city called made art shows mm. and then uh we we like to do pop-ups around the city and they have a beautiful shop out there i don't know if you to the people that are watching this go check it out they have an amazing barber shop um and i you know i walked in there and i fell in love with the layout so i'm like yo listen man we gotta we gotta do something in here man to kind of yeah it's dope beautiful. super it's dope beautiful. so it's beautiful man um yeah, so excuse me. So I want to say uh, co-creator of Made. Yeah, Made Art Shows. Made Art yeah, Shows. Yeah. Uh, official DJ for the D BC Lions. Yeah, super uh, cool. Super dope yeah, gig, yeah, by the yeah. way. Okay, we'll, we'll get it, we're going to get into that a little yeah, bit yeah, later, for too. Sure. Um, Hush Music Parties. Yeah. Uh, what else are you hosting around the city? Are you hosting anything? Or uh, Hush Music Parties, Made Art Shows. Yeah. Um, like you said, we do. And I do a lot of... DJing for his Cactus Club. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, cool, the cool, 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 cool. myself and like a team of DJs that um, we're kind of placing different locations and we just play music for the right. clients, man. Right. Which yeah, is super no, for dope. sure. That's how long you been DJing for? Man, in my bedroom since I was seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, but like in the clubs since I was twenty, twenty one. That's a pretty quick jump there. Yeah, you don't really mess around. Like most people yeah. like start spinning records, and it's like ten years till they get around to like actually. You know. Yeah, I mean, now the thing is, because I was I was throwing parties, and and, and I was so somewhat affiliated with some people in the industry already. Mm. And then my I well, I was lucky enough because my brother in law DJ El Nino is a DJ, so he kind of helped me out with with the whole process of DJing. Mm. Um, by lending me some of his records and oh, okay but he told me like listen man you can't get that serato yet that's like in the peak where serato which is like a dj program that djs use okay yeah that was like when it was coming out so he's like yo listen spend your money buying a mixer and the uh, turntables and i'll lend you my records and like practice your beat match yeah, which yeah, is yeah. like don't you're scratching, you're like all scratching or like my you know pullbacks and the back and forth master that and then once you have that on lock everything else is going to be easier nice. so i kind of got lucky in that aspect because i was um connected with my brother-in-law and then by throwing parties when i was younger i got involved with like some people in the industry so um i think back to your point the fact that the jump was so fast is because i was already kind of involved with these guys and i knew them and i'm like yo just give me a shot with the tables 
and then I did that, and then the rest is the rest history. Is history. Yeah, in yeah, sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you kind of got that. Uh, what's it, Mr. Miyagi? Yeah. Wax on, wax off. Listen, just you know, literally, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. literally, wax on, wax, wax off, on, wax off, yeah. <laughs> um, and to get to get your fundamentals down, that's uh, right, yeah. You, you know that as a you know as a hooper man, nothing more important than the fundamentals. That's a fact. Um, but yeah, that sorry, just go back to that wisdom club space. It's an amazing space, man. I uh, right that was exact when they opened up. I think it was November. I want to say two two years ago now. Must be. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That that was one of the first places I went actually. Um, to was Wisdom Club Barbershop. They had just opened up, sure. and uh, I love the aesthetic or whatever. So I just went mm-hmm. up and they they were honestly still in construction at that point. They didn't have the um, anything on the wall. Yeah. They only had a couple of seats in there. Yeah. Um, but the aesthetic was amazing from the jump. And obviously, th- these guys are like digitally and, and you know creatively inclined. That's right. As yeah, well as, as barbers. Well. Like when the I think whole about family. yeah with the whole yeah pause that yeah. family's incredibly talented yeah yeah um but when i think about wisdom club i actually don't even think about barbering yeah like like that's like i know that's the pillar i know that's what they do yeah but in terms of you know whether you know what marv and marlin are doing or, mm-hmm. or you know just you know jules as a creative mm-hmm. as an artist all that stuff like they are literally have their hand on everything a lot of right? things yeah yeah and uh and that's that's beautiful man i actually uh yeah i got my first vancouver cut there and then I remember. Uh, shout out, uh, Rain. Rain was like a seven. Uh, you know, Rain at the at the shop. He's all tatted up now. He's, nah, I know. I know it's just a few of the cats out there, but like I'm sure I've seen them. But I, yeah, I'm terrible nah, with sure. names, man. He, yeah, uh, yo, you meet so many people. Yeah, you meet so many damn people, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's, you can only Dunbar's number, man. You can you can only what's it, 150. You can only maintain 150 relationships. Dunbar's number. Wow. Okay. That's, that's uh, learn that's something a, new. I didn't. I didn't know that. That's, that's a fact. That's yeah. a fact right there. That's uh, came out of some university. If I could, yeah, I, I'd just say some bullshit. But uh, it's uh, that's dope. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I do that. know that is a number. You can wiki that, listeners. Get off my dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a cool thing. I, didn't, I never knew that. Yeah, Dunbar's yeah. number. So it's just like you can only actively maintain and converse, and you know have 150 maximum active relationships yeah. and after that it just starts to fall off exponentially yeah. just simply because of human capacity yeah you know absolutely. And, you know what our minds at so uh it was yo rain yeah rain i went in there he was a 17 year old kid mm. and they brought him as a junior barber and i was like hey like throw me at anybody and they were really busy because it just opened like ah oh, this kid rain can cut yeah and uh, were you nervous i was like yeah i'm white so my you know, my hair is yeah, fucked like, either way it. man like yeah. who gives a shit at the end of the day yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> and uh and he was dope man and he was he had like no tattoos now he's like all tatted out he's like one he's of the cool senior now. barbers yeah, yeah he's yeah, like yeah. he's like it now yeah, yeah. his like instagram's popped off and shit i'm like oh you cool now yeah like, yeah, yeah. you whatever. that guy whatever 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 booked yeah them busy man yeah booked him busy so actually you know, fuck crazy actually this, so this watch um my my girlfriend got this for me for our uh year anniversary she put what's mine is ours on the back of this watch, no lie. The same quote that they same have on the wall. That's on the, on the yeah. Wisdom Club. Yeah, it's from Matt Fly. Hold up, I'll get this. Is I that, um, yeah, did she like check that out? That's sick. Isn't that fly on that's a watch awesome. yeah. on a on a year anniversary? That's Shout out sick. Tracy. Yeah, that's dope. That's did crazy, she, right? Is it the same? Like, did she, she saw it there and then she kind of so the just story did it? behind that is like, I went to wisdom and we were fresh in the city she had already lived in the city okay and i was coming coming here for work so you know uh we just started living together basically and, and yeah. she, i went to get cut there and i came back i was like i think the second time i went to get cut there they were putting it on the wall yeah and uh, i think that is marv's creation that quote i think so i don't I'm assuming. I don't know. But I, I can't tell you. But I loved it. He explained it to me, and I was like, I fell Sick. in love with it. Sick. I fell in love because yeah. I I came to the city for basketball coaching, and so a lot of you know my philosophy in coaching is just like, you know, you're only as good as the time you put in, yeah. and I and I I mean that across all aspects in life. And Absolutely. what is again, maybe if you, maybe if you use the money analogy, like say you're a trust fund kid, and mm. you know, not hating on trust fund kids, mm. a little bit, but yeah, <laughs> out great. of jealousy, yeah. you know, yeah. it's all good. <laughs> I'm hating a little bit. I'm hating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be out there, just yeah, say. Yeah. Um, but like, if you just get, you know, 500k off the riff, 
500k doesn't mean much to you you know but if you you bust your ass for you know five ten years yeah you know to save up for 500k or whatever yeah you know that has value it's the only thing in life that has value in my perspective is things that i've dedicated time and effort to that's right right and that's kind of the way he explained that to me and um and so that stuck with me ever since man but it, that just speaks to their creative direction absolutely and, and their mindset man yeah just to have that mentality it's like it's huge man like i mean for them to be as successful as they are and you got to have that type of mentality and like and and, and point of view on life you know yeah. what i mean because i mean you they wouldn't make it that far if they didn't have that which yeah. is dope family mentality that's family a fact mentality. yeah these yeah. brothers are like killing it yeah no they're uh yeah they got their fingerprints on everything so and like yeah speaking and you know just to kind of like do a little plug yeah um you did you, yeah. you did something with them yeah no i'm actually i she yeah i she i've somewhat did something with them and they covered uh the queens of the culture made our show that that i did at uh, a sneaker shop called grail okay so uh it was marlin and paulo they came and documented the the, the whole the whole thing which is super cool and then we kind of had a conversation about potentially doing like another pop-up like at the next maid right <clears throat> potentially at wisdom and then i want to go see uh you know, I hit up Marv like probably a year ago, just, you know, sh talking shit or whatever. I was like, yo, listen, can we potentially do something out there? And then he said yes, but we didn't really speak about it until, until like just as of recent. Right. And then I went to go see them at the shop. And then like I mentioned earlier, um, we're going to do something out there December Sweet. 13th, man. Sweet. Oh, December 13th. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, so oh, it's coming up. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, I don't want to. You know, too much. It. I don't want to jinx it or whatever, <laughs> but it's like, you know, we're, we're thinking about doing something like close to like, you know, holiday season. Beautiful. So. Beautiful. Yeah. No, nah, man, that's a, that's an amazing space, but hold up. Let's, let's rewind here. Let's rewind here. Yeah, Cause you did something too, too dope to just skim over like that. <laughs> uh, Queens of the culture. Yeah. How did that come to, for, what is that? Yeah. Um, the story of where it was because it was held at an amazing venue. Sick. Like, how did that come to fruition? That that couldn't have just, you know, happened overnight. No, it was just like, you know, it was an idea that my partner and I, Adam, he's an artist. Like, okay. He's a beast when it comes to, like, drawing and stuff Andy like local. that. You talk Andy about Local, that. yeah. Gotcha. Uh, look him up on Instagram. He's a monster when it comes to, like, art. Um, we, we were just kind of, like, talking about it and it was pretty much, like, an honor to to the women in the culture and you know i kind of came up with like the name like yo we should call it queens of the culture beautiful we we're thinking about like hip-hop honeys that, that just sounded corny yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. and then uh, we're like yo queens of the culture it sounds good classy classy and prior to that we actually like had an event committed to uh uh rihanna oh because i'm a fucking rihanna fan i don't if you're not a rihanna fan uh, just look at her you know what I mean? They look at her, <laughs> listen, to, listen her, to her, smell her. I don't know shit. Yeah. Goddamn. But anyways, nonetheless, we did that. So that was kind of like a, in a sense, like a part two to that event. Oh, okay. And um, yeah. So, oh, so that event went down. That was a real thing. The Rihanna. Yeah. That oh, was, yeah, what was Rihanna. that? Uh, that was at, uh, we collaborated with the Lululemon Lab in Gastown. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. So we tend to kind of bounce around in different type of spaces, not just the typical like art space. So we did that at the Lululemon Lab, and we called that the Gallery. <sighs> Get it? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Re, re, Come re, on, re, re. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we called that the Gallery. So that was cool. So we collaborated with amazing artists from the city that each came out with like a few pieces to showcase. Beautiful. And then um, as a part two, we're like, hey, we should probably just like you know that was a great success. A lot of people appreciated that. So let's just kind of capitalize on that type of vibe and kind of pay homage to the women hmm. so um adam was like yeah that he was down and he and he was working on this crazy beyonce piece anyway so i'm I've like seen, yo adam if you're listening fam. to this thing i need prints of that okay i know crazy. i know i listen i know i'm gonna slide in your dms and i need a print of that yeah i, I a pause i don't mean to interrupt you here but i'm gonna say real quick uh uh, from the boys at Wisdom, they did like uh, the Kobe and the AI mm -hmm. and uh, uh, J Cole picks. Yeah, bought one of those, and I needed I need to match that with that one he did a B. So yeah. I'm gonna get you, Adam. I'm Man. gonna get I'm gonna yeah. get that print from yeah. you somehow. I swear. I, Name a price, man. Name yeah. a price. <laughs> Dude, that piece is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he was working on this piece. So he was working on the piece. I'm like, okay, cool. So we kind of had to sit down and we just like, yo, we should call it Queens of the Culture. Boom, boom, boom. And then um, we kind of reached out to different artists that would be interested in being part of it. Right. And then 
they were down they were down with the idea and it's like i hit up like uh one of my homegirls a girl that run uh that runs grail the sneaker shop she's like hey we're opening a shop it'll be cool to have you here her name is keisha big shout out to keisha, shout out keisha and then sure. um yeah she hosted the event for us and then um it was popping it was cool so, and back so. to the whole wisdom thing the boys kind of covered the, the event and then from that event we just uh gonna do something else soon gotcha. but yeah it was gotcha. the whole the whole meaning of that is just to really pay homage to all the beautiful women that are killing it in the game that are very influential because yeah. we pay a lot of we pay a lot of attention to like the dudes and the, like the jay-z's and like the wayne's the wayne's and, and, and the like the, yeah, yeah you know what i mean but it's like these women kill like this year they killed it like scissor beyonce cardi cardi nikki. b nikki you yeah, know what i mean yeah, like yeah. you name them they 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 they, they were running this year yeah so man we, yeah. we kind of had to you know show a little bow down a little bit no nah, it's beautiful man pay pay respects because sure. I mean, we've we've i don't even want not even as a culture as a civilization sleeping on this shit for sleeping killing they be killing the game like yeah. just as a dj like <clears throat> noticing what i'm playing i'm like yo that cardi b goes hard the Nicki minaj goes hard the beyonce's go hard like yeah yeah, yeah. I actually did a mixtape with like, because uh, every every made event I try to do like a oh, like a mix cool. yeah. to kind of like showcase set the vibe, the vibe yeah, set yeah. the vibe. So, um, yeah, I did that and just listening back to that tape, I was like, yo, they're killing the they game. Go hard. Right? They yeah. go hard. They go hard. So that new scissor. Oh, and like, oh man, uh, I don't want to butcher her name. Ella, Ellie, Ella, Ella May, Ella May. Yeah. Oh my god. Right. Nonstop. 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 Oh, uh, her. Yeah. And her, um, you name it. There's so many other other women that are killing it right now. Man, I'm I'm more on the R&B than I'm on hip hop right now. Where? No, no lie, no word of a lie, man. Like, and even like on the on the on the dude side, uh -huh. I think Joe Biden said this. I'm gonna bite him right now. But he was like, "Yo, all the R&B dudes mm. go harder than the rappers right now." That's a fact. Like, like, like really, really, like really go harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're yeah they're harder than rappers. Um, who's your top like? artist like who are you listening to right now oh man i wish i had my phone right here yeah. um honestly i'm big on the new her right now yeah um i'm big on rust right now yeah Russ is dope. um Russ is cool Russ is cool i'm big on um man there's like so many off the top of yeah, my head that's a t that's you know a what to be honest question. with you ever since his passing man i've i've had swimming mac on, miller like, yeah just non-stop i was booming that album yo I was talking to my girl like when the album came out and I was like, yo, this album is fire. And then nobody, like in nope. the blogs, nobody was talking about it. And then when he passed away, it's like, oh, the Mike Miller album was amazing. I'm it like, was always amazing. You just didn't listen. That's what I'm saying. Like what what album came out when he came, when his album came out? Something else came out and they were oh, paying more man. attention to that. I forget. Was it Astro World? No. Yeah, yeah. Was I think it, it was World? Yeah. Travis Scott. Um, yeah, man, that uh, boss on Milky Way. Yeah. God, God damn. Yeah. Boss shit. See, I'm not going to lie. I'm not really like, I haven't been paying attention to boss. Oh, man. You, I got to do that. Get on. You just tell you what. Just go find the Dreamville roster. Yeah. They're because crazy. they're uh, Ari Lennox, um, female, again, yeah, yeah. Ama amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, Earth Gang, J.I.D., Boss, uh, Cole, of course, obviously. There's like me. Everyone says, everyone that's kind of like, you know, just listens to hip hop as pop is always like, oh, you know, like rap's kind of in a bad place with all the model no. rap. No, no, no. No, it's really not. It's M in music a is in an amazing place right yeah. now, especially with that we just, you know, uh, we're speaking about with the influence of the uh, Caribbean culture. That's and, right. Uh, and Afro beats and stuff like that, man. Yeah. Like it's, I don't know. Where do you think music goes from here? Like what's the sound? What's the next the sound? sound? You're a DJ. You got your ear to the streets. Yeah. What's the next sound? I mean, like. The sounds really like it's our choice to really create the sound or to actually like uh, choose a sound. Sure. You know what I mean? So, I mean, oh, that's a good question. Where's the next sound? Um, you know, like it's obviously gone. I mean, Drake is taking. I mean, Drake put the low end in everything. You know? Yeah. Like he he got the wavy sound, the oceanic sound. What? I mean, Drake Drake really. I mean, no disrespect to how he does his thing, but he kind of jumps on like trends and and not 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 because he he needs to. But because he actually likes the music and he needs to, I think he kind of sheds a light on that music. It's like, right. yo, this shit is popping, so let me jump on this and kind of showcase that type of vibe to like the world and it's, to my world, yeah. which is his world is fucking a huge, huge platform. Mm, mm. So, um, yeah, he's, he's he did the he's doing the reggaeton right now, but I'm sure people approaches him about it. But he's been doing like the Afro beats for a while. He's, he's been doing like. 
But I mean, I feel like, like you said, musically, I think it's it's gonna be a lot of cultured music in a sense, like really uh, deep rooted. Like, uh, you know, people are gonna showcase their background more. Like, that, yeah, yeah, right? truth. Yeah, the like truth Cardi B. Yeah, show, Cardi right. B's doing the whole, you know, collaborating with like Bad Bunny and like J Balvin. Like that's she's she's Latina. You know what I mean? And it's, it's like, fire. yeah, and it's, it's fire. like that really. You know, it's still hip hop incorporated, but you know, she's showcasing like the roots of like what she really is and if you come through the thing that's as a strictly a fan if yeah. you look at um if you just take the traditional hip-hop drum kits yeah and apply them to different whether that's afro beats or whether that's even um even what they've done in, in electronic music and house music and if you just like you that drum kit yeah like the traditional like way back like grandmaster flash like type thing is so versatile and if you just take the the, the core basis of that and yeah. sprinkle it in with different you know genres or whatever man that's got to be that's, fun for like from a oh yeah shit from, yeah. from a dj perspective absolutely you gotta yeah. be able to mix that up like crazy yeah, yeah. it just you know in a city like like ours and, and just in the club industry like people just got to be able to accept it you know what i mean like sometimes <sighs> You know, when you play a certain type of music, like Afrobeat, some people love it, but some people just still want to hear that Travis Scott. You know what I mean? They want to stick to that hip hop or that yeah, certain yeah. type of like whatever they're comfortable hearing, they want to hear. So as a DJ, sometimes we got to put our pride aside and just be like, you know what? I'm just going to play this song and like teach him because that's our job at right. the end of the day to introduce new music and new vibes, right? Yeah, you make the culture. Yeah. You so, really do. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. Like people just got to, you know, you know, have an open ear and just let things like. I think maybe a little bit of that is just Vancouver too. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's you know, no disrespect to our city because it's super dope, but like it's a very stubborn city in regards to they like what they like and yeah. like mm -hmm. fuck everything else type of stuff. Like it's that's why there's so many great DJs in the city because we have a stubborn crowd, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and that's just my own opinion i could be totally wrong but from an outside looking in i'm assuming that the clientele that comes to our clubs or wherever we're playing they like what they like so if you're playing something else that they're not familiar with or they just never heard of the dance floor clears out a little bit crazy but if you go to like you know a booming city for example like you know you go to paris yeah right you playing oh, some man. different type of it's a, it's just a different type of energy in different cities i understand that but it's like you know like you said it's like, it could be a vancouver thing but it could be you know the fact that djs got comfortable playing the same stuff so people got accustomed to it there's different type of factors, yeah maybe right? a little bit of both I, I think that a part of it is like let me put it like this you know, in high school, right? So say you go into high school in the 10th grade or whatever grade you go into high school now. And you're a young person. You haven't necessarily developed your identity. That's so right. you just kind of automatically latch on to, uh, you know, whatever is most popular or whatever comes most naturally to you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, th I feel as if the Vancouver scene in general is maybe in a, a spot where it's a little bit in its infancy, where it's, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Toronto has a sound, we're a latch onto that. Exactly. Atlanta has a sound, we're a latch onto that. Yeah. As all emerging markets and emerging cities kind of are like that. But the thing, and that's cool, that is what it is. That's just that's just a part of, you know, growth and development. And, you know, our nightlife is growing and our city is growing. And it's, it's becoming more beautiful, more diversified as it goes. That's but right. I'm, I'm really just more looking forward to, we had Jamie Coos on the other day. And uh, yeah. he was speaking a lot about Vancouver having its moment in terms of like, he really feels that we have the caliber of DJs and mm -hmm. the caliber of artists and the caliber of producers yeah. to start crafting what the Vancouver sound. sound is. That's right. What do you think? Where do you think that's going to go? Do you, like, what is that sound going to be? Oh, man, that sound, that sound. I know it's a tough question. That's a tough that's question, a question because it's like, as you mentioned, we're influenced by, you know, everything around us but we're not really looking within right like we're not really trying to figure out like our thing we're just thinking you know toronto got that sound so i'm trying to wave i'm trying so, to jump yeah, on that wave yeah, so yeah, yeah. um you know i don't i really don't have the answer for you but i could tell you i agree with jamie uh there's phenomenal artists in the city man and like the music that we that i'm getting from all these artists popping yeah run them in the club is booming and 
you know to artists that are listening like never be sh- like send send dj's music like don't be shy to like you know don't just post that on the gram and be like yo my new album's out yeah you why know? didn't you pick it up yeah yeah you know you don't have a new track my man i'm i'm busy trying to get all the new stuff to run my night yeah. like just send me yeah. your stuff and tell yeah. me your shit's fire if it's dope i'll play it if it doesn't work yet i'm definitely gonna have it but i'm gonna play it because I fuck with the city, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, but just yeah, yeah. send it over. So, yeah. um, and then when that happens, and like we have a shitload of music from Vancouver, that way I think we can kind of control the vibe in the city, right, right, right. Because we have the option of playing all these songs, and then the clientele is gonna be like, "Oh shit, that's so and so. I know, I know this song. Right. That's also I know this song." So I think that's really gonna help if like artists keep sending us music, and then, and then we keep we keep playing it, and then the culture and the vibe kind of grows within. Mm like there's plenty of people that are trying to do um that are trying to help the 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 scene like you know floetic even with with emotions like the open mic you could go and showcase grassroots yeah grassroots. Uh, like you know the homie johnny from crescendo Christian, he does like big shows but he still has like dudes from the city right that are showcasing you know and it's like you know he has he could have little uzi but he has like Illy, Illy yeah, Miyachi yeah, yeah, from yeah, the city yeah, yeah, in one yeah. stage, you know what I mean? Like put them in the same level. That's 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 how the city's really gonna grow and grow get to that point. And get to that yeah, point yeah, where it's yeah. like, yo, they gotta show us respect too, man. No, for sure. I mean, I ask you because I mean, you're Vancouver, not born but bred for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, like if there's anyone's got their pulse on it, it's you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you know you're in the clubs and you, and you see it. You're also deeply within the you know the culture itself, especially with the made shows, and yeah. especially with you know, being plugged in with the self fire guys and especially with Hush, like you're yeah. really you're you're really there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I look to guys like you, guys like Floetic to be like, Okay, where are we going? What are we doing? What's you know, what's the mood in the city right now? That's right, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah, I feel that, but at the same time, as much as you say that, mm. I'm looking forward I I'm looking for like I said, you have background background in the Congo. Mm. I wanna see that. I wanna see your French come in. I wanna see like yeah. there's so many you know, right now, right now, Vancouver is just a meat and potato soup. You yeah, know, just yeah. Throw the spice in. You yeah, know, like yeah. if some people don't like it, like it, that's okay. We want to get to a flavor we like. Yeah, you know that's what I'm right. But we got to experiment a little bit. Yeah, and we're we're lucky because we're Canadian, so we have these people coming to us from our different countries, mm-hmm. and we have these ingredients to play with. All yeah. I'm saying is, let's play with them. Let's play with them. Let's play with them. So, I mean, speaking of that, our approach with you know an event that we put together called Hush. Please speak on it. The whole thing is the whole approach was to to uh, create an event that has like no barriers when it comes to like genres of music, mm. right? Don't you have a tagline? Like, uh, yeah, uh, music, uh, music without, without without borders. Music without borders. Yeah, yeah. So it's like even the mixtapes that that we put together for the night is is, and the music that we play within that night is really showcasing. It's not really a showcase, but just we're trying to create a different vibe, like you say. We bring in like the Latin flavors, we bring in African flavors, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Caribbean flavors. Uh, like we even playing like, I mean, we haven't played rock and roll because we don't really have the clientele for it. But sure, you know, we played deep house. Like we just play all kinds of vibe. We try to cater to everybody, but at the same time, we're trying to stay away from the norm of just playing. Yeah. Hip hop and R and B and trap, trap, you know what trap, I mean. Trap, we're gonna trap. have, we're gonna turn up, but it's yeah, like yeah. you're gonna hear some different stuff and you're gonna enjoy it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the whole point of doing that. So, uh, to your point, like we we're just trying to incorporate different type of spices and, and and make it a house party that caters to everybody. But you know, you're gonna, you know, I'm gonna, we're gonna hit you in different angles and yeah. like. Make sure uh, your senses are all like <laughs> you're feeling. You're a feeling type it, like, of way. you're just yeah, like yeah, shit. Yeah. Like I never felt like this. What are they playing? Why are yeah. they playing it? But it works. You know, yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. how you go. The atmosphere feel. is a little different. It's it different. feels a little bit more intimate or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right. When's the next party coming up? Uh, this long weekend. We try to do it every long weekend. We'll so it's gonna be on Sundays. It's an early thing too. So mm-hmm. if you if you wake up early like yourself, gotta get out. Yeah, you could you could get out from eight until twelve p- uh, a.m. and then you could go home, mm. or you could come through for a drink vibe out until 12 and then go somewhere else until 3 you know what yeah, I mean so yeah. it's like a it's a vibe it's so super so you guys are hitting these every month every second month or what's the every long weekend every long weekend okay yeah, yeah, okay yeah, okay so Sunday vibe real it's mature a, it's, it seems like it's a vibe yeah it's yeah. a vibe yeah you. I mean, you should come out man I got you I yeah, got you yeah. I got you so how'd you how'd you how'd you get into the position that you're in right now with the BC Lions because that's a major gig right there yeah super dope it was um like I've done 
<clears throat> I've done um, like I know some of the guys I play for the team. Okay. And and uh, I ended up doing a few uh, of their Christmas parties and corporate events and whatnot. Yeah. And then um, one of my one of their managers, uh, you know, we have mutual friends. And she's like, yo, and you know, she's like, yo, listen, I really like the way you play, and we're trying to do something new, new in the stadium, bring a different type of energy to the stadium. So, um, you know, would you be interested in doing this? Because she took over. I forget the name of her position. I'm sorry about that, but she's like, I guess like the mat, like the production manager yeah. for like the the events for the games. So, um, yeah, she's like, you know, we're trying to bring something new to the table and bring a diff- different type of energy to the stadium. So, if you're down to help us out, would you be down to like maybe DJ? We're gonna have a section for you and get you to rock the mic and play some music for the people. So this year was the first year that we did that and. Boom, like it just it was a great experience and like it's been fun, man. Man, congratulations. So you yeah, hey man, you. you're playing stadiums. Yeah, playing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't like to really flex, but that's a that's that's pretty that's cool. That's big, man. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It it, it doesn't get bigger than that. <laughs> to play for like twenty two thousand or like whatever whatever B C yeah. place is like thirty thousand or something like that. Man, I think at capacity B C place is like thirty five, forty thousand, yeah. I think. Yeah. So like the average game is probably like between like seventeen like to twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like and it's like all kinds of people. So it's pretty cool. Like it's, it's very, a dope very, vibe. Very, yeah. very, very cool for yeah. sure. But I mean, uh someone had to lose their job, no? Uh maybe. I don't know. I don't I don't hey, ask those you questions. Don't know the brother. Man. You know, right. I don't I don't ask those questions. I just like <laughs> You know, you need a service and I can provide it, I'll do it for you. You yeah. know what I mean? So <laughs> I, I don't ask who whose job was it? Was it? It's none of my business, man. Yeah, I feel like uh, switching DJs is like a big deal. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, it's like you, you have a relationship with a DJ and you got to break up with one to get with to another, get another one. one. Yeah. Like, That's why I'd rather not like even know who was doing it before me. <laughs> Baby, I don't, I don't want to know who your ex was. Yeah, right? yeah, I don't like, care. I don't, like, I don't know. I, I don't want to make it awkward. It, like, 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 Baby, you, you, you're a virgin in my eyes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, like, come like, on now. That's it's it's, it's it's you know, I'm sure I'm sure the DJ that was doing it before me, you know, moved on and and, and doing Maybe something you know, else like Calgary, you know, who knows? Yeah, whatever it is. Hopefully. But it's like you know, um, I, you know, I'm assuming they're happy with the services and and and. and the people are happy with the vibe. It just brings a different type of energy. Like mm. it's amazing to see like adults and kids and anybody just vibing around me. So you how do you, how how uh, a stadium is much different than a hush music party? So oh yeah, how absolutely. Do you, how do you play to a stadium crowd? Um, it's I mean we're not. It's not like I'm playing the whole time, right? Well, sure, sure, yeah, obviously, but I think that you still you have to curate a certain yeah, way yeah it's a, it's and your interaction with the crowd with the crowd so like. it's really like you know it's cool because you know they already have some type of a high energy because it is a game and then just me going on the microphone and getting them hyped up and then playing a banger <laughs> yeah and yeah. it just sounds amazing in the stadium and just like I'm vibing out with them cuz I'm not hitting like there's I'm in a section people see me Oh. Right, so it's kind of like I'm partying with them. Right. So I think that makes a huge difference in the stadium, and the energy is just so high. It's, it's, it's super right. cool. Right, like right, it's super right. dope. Yeah. That's super crazy. Um, but it's definitely a different type of like. There's levels of shit. Boy. Like, yeah, <laughs> like different type of scale to like you know from doing the stadium to doing like say you know going to a restaurant setting like, like cactus you know like it's, 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 it's <laughs> oh, yeah, different shit. yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> you're really all over the map yeah, right now like, man. yeah it's kind of like boom boom but it, it's, it's it's dope like it, it's been a great experience it's been a cool season and like the boys in the field like they fuck with the hip-hop you know what i mean i'm a hip-hop guy course, too so course. it's like it just works out it's a win-win situation for like both Damn. parties wow man coming from the congo next thing you know you're fucking dj for the bc Lions, yeah yeah man. it's cool uh, yeah you had to call your mom on that one but like mom yeah you wouldn't believe it it's cool my mom comes to the games once in a while no way. it's kind of dope yeah oh yeah. man she was like super proud like it was cool it was, was she a cool. football fan at all or she just there nah, to see she's, her son she's man, like she has no idea what's going on <laughs> dude i have no idea what's going on oh, for real? <laughs> oh man i'm not gonna lie man like, like touch that yeah yep. yeah yeah <laughs> i mean i know like the basics but it's like I'm not gonna front like oh I know my football. Yeah. Like, I'm a basketball guy, I like soccer, but um, I'm definitely like getting more into it because I've been watching every game. 
yeah. like yeah having my family like my mom there my sisters there like Super my girl there like, it's, it's dope so it's a vibe cool, it's cool man. yeah so cool. my niece is there they're like excited yeah, like yeah it's dope it's crazy because even if the thing about you know I'm, i was looking in obviously but i think that even if you have the skill set uh -huh. in the ear of a high caliber dj yeah you won't get that respect until you're in situations like yourself yeah am i wrong or i mean not i mean i'm not gonna say you won't even if i mean you know not, you're not gonna get respect this is it uh, doesn't let, matter where you let play. me change my wording a little bit not yeah. respect but let's say notoriety yeah maybe yeah yeah mm. but at the same time for some people it may seem like you know uh you know right time right place for you you know it could be anybody else type of shit but um that wasn't the case yeah but uh not to like to my own horn but it's like i know what type of dj i am and what i could you know what i could bring to the table but um yeah it's not it's not really like a they're not gonna show me more respect or less respect if i was doing that or not right? sure sure yeah. sure. it's just sure. like oh it's kind of good for you man it's kind of cool like yeah 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 and it's it's more of an exposure for myself but it's like it, it won't i don't think it's gonna change the way people look at me sure sure i mean or at yeah. least my peers yeah for sure but yeah. that's the people that really know you so i'm saying like in, in terms of the casual fan like for instance if you were like oh you know who uh just the the casual music fan okay which which, D, which djs do you know and they'll be like i don't even know who's a popping dj right now uh in the mixes i don't even know like in the city or no, just, just in general. General. Oh, dj mustard oh yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah word yeah <laughs> dj mustard they said dj mustard or whatever right yeah like or they might say, you know, Jazzy four, four, Jeff, ja Jazzy Jazz, Jack, or Four yeah. Corners or like yeah. whatever that. So as soon as you get to a certain level, it's like, oh, you know, now you can legitimately be a household name. Yeah, yeah, no right? doubt. Like that, that, that is legitimately a thing now versus, you know, if you're playing at, you know, different club events or whatever, that might mm. not be the case. That's right. Yeah, right? yeah, you're right. That's true. It's like uh, it's a little more leverage that I have in my on my, oh, absolutely! On my, yeah, yeah, that, the, yeah, the bag goes up. Yeah, yeah, the bag like, has yeah, to go up. Yeah, yeah, it's the, the bag like, didn't go up, man. Come on, it's like, yeah, I gotta step my game yeah, up, let's right? Go. Yeah, Jeez, Lou, <laughs> no, no doubt. Um, and it's also like a mama I made it. Type yeah, of, yeah. It ha I don't know for sure. I mean, like it's it's it's, it's definitely like an accomplishment. Like you know, uh, when you set goals and you're like, shit, I'm gonna play in that stadium oh, one yeah. day. It's yeah. like whatever. I've said that to myself before, but I never thought I I would play for like you know every home game and i'm like you know the announcer's like yo it's dj icy touch to rock the crowd and like <laughs> the camera zooms on me and it's like i'm rocking the mic with them it's like i've never done that before yeah. but uh yeah it's kind of like wow like it hasn't really kicked in yet like this is a cool thing like, this is a vibe so when this happened when did when did you actually start uh this season Yo, I'm super ignorant right now, bro. When did the season start? <laughs> uh, shit. The season started in, fam. It started in, like I'm not going to lie. I think it was, yeah, like August, September, maybe? Oh I don't God. know. I, if you were about to say March, I was just, oh, man. No, yeah. It was, it was. I think it's, maybe a little before that. Okay. Like, I think it was like in the summertime. Actually, no, I'm bugging. It was June. It's June. June? It's June, July, because I missed one game because I, I was in Paris for my cousin's wedding. Oh, okay. And then I came back, so I had to miss. Yeah, it was like kind of like June, July. Oh damn! So what they do for that game? They had to get the X back in the house for one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, no, sure. Let me hit it one more yeah, time. Yeah. I, 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 I had somebody else cover me, so that yeah, boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that might not be a good yeah, look. Yeah, like, yeah. Nah, that wouldn't work. That if they had the X back, I would have been like, "Yo, fam, you gonna do me like yeah. that? Like, <laughs> it's not gonna work, man. I don't, on, I, you're not gonna play I me. I don't play like that. Come on, yeah. come on now. Yeah. Uh, that's super funny, man. So. You got to have a certain type of gear to go into that mode. Like, I always wonder about DJs. Mm -hmm. You're a player. You're yeah. a basketball player. I mean, you play ball, right? Yeah. So, like, if you're stepping on the court, you you, 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 you click into a mode. Yeah. You're like, okay, now I'm playing, right? Yeah. And, and for a lot of, for most players, it's a serious mode where they're focused, they're zoned in. I always wonder for DJs, you know, you're going about your your your, your life, and for a player, you might be like, oh, I got a game tonight, I got to lock in. That's right. For a DJ, what is that like? Because you're, you're locking in, you've got to be focused, you're demonstrating a skill set, you, uh -huh. this is a real thing, yeah. but that skill set is playful. How does that, how do you get in that mindset? Say, I mean, yeah, I mean, it all depends on, like, the type of event you're doing, too, but that, mind, that mindset is you know you got to go in like you got to first you got to be confident yeah right because w you got to be confident with w what you're gonna play mm. and obviously you want to have you want to prepare yourself like 
you know, if I'm doing your wedding, I want to make sure it's the best night of your life, right? Right. That's a lot of pressure. Damn. And, you know, you want to give allow yourself enough time to, like, prep your sets. But it's a different ball game when you're doing a wedding or you're doing, like, a night, right? So if mm-hmm. I'm getting booked for, like, a night in New York City, for example, I got to know what I'm getting into. Like, you know, I'm playing in New York. I want to I wanna make sure I have, like, I know the bangers in New York, what, what rocks yeah, in New yeah, York City. Yeah, what's the streets right who's, now. What's, what's yeah, popping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at the same time, I still want to keep my identity. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to just sound like any other Any like, other DJ. DJ. They could have hired anybody. That's no. what I'm saying. So it's like, although I'm going to play some New York shit and, like, keep the crowd rocking, I'm going to make sure they know I'm African. And I'm going to play Word. where I'm going to incorporate some Word. Afro beats. So... And all of my sets, I try to, you know, I don't care where I'm playing. And mine is like a wedding or like, you know, a BC stadium or whatever. I try to, you know, for me, it's like, I want to make sure if you're not looking at the DJ booth and you're just not, you don't know who's DJing, and then, but you hear me play, you're going to be like, shit, that sounds like Icy. Tight. That's my goal. Tight. Right? Tight. But to answer your question as to how long can, it's just preparation and and, and knowing what you're getting into. Mm. And 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 being confident with the fact that hey man I'm I'm a rock this party because sometimes promoters or like managers come up to you and kind of throw you off like yo can you switch it up play this play that yeah it happens and sometimes you got to readjust your sets but you, you get kind of anxiety when people tell you to switch it up so you kind of get in your own head like am I not doing a good job like right. what's going on right but like you got to just have zone, a ton yeah. zone in have a tunnel vision accept what they they want like okay cool i'm gonna I'm readjust like whatever you think yeah. i should but i still gotta do what i gotta do for my for for my own sanity man <laughs> for your own sanity yeah for sure man, i can't play that shit yeah hey, yo so, yo can you throw so-and-so on no no sorry no. yeah no i try to say yes as much as i can but sometimes you gotta put your foot down man like mm. you can't just fuck up your set and your vibe for one person mm. yeah. you ever had anything popped off behind up behind the dj booth like at a fight all? yeah 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 man uh, maybe in the Shine days, like Shine is like a spot that we used to go to. Like Shine was a joint, man. Uh, you're too young to know about this, man. <laughs> but it's, it's it's that used to be like a Saturday night. Like she, me and Floetta used to do. Uh, we used to do this room in the back room. Uh, this this night in the back room of Shine, but Shine was fairly small. Okay. And then um, it was a Saturday night that we started in the back room, and that back back room was like the smallest. Smaller than this room, actually. Actually, not as big as this room, so it's tiny, it's tiny for a club, room. right? My God, we used to pack them up. That's like an apartment right? party, yeah, man. Yeah, Everybody yeah. grinding up on each other, her sweat running down your back. But that was like, yo, know, the DJ booth was like right here, and like the bar was like literally like connected to the DJ booth in a sense. But it was just like the vibe, right? And then, nonetheless, the night grew to become uh, like one of the, one of the most popular nights in the city on, on Saturday the nights. And then, yeah, maybe, maybe something popped off in, in, in that. And we ended up graduating to playing in the front room. and But that ba- that front room DJ booth was huge. Okay. So people used to kind of come in and kind of just kick it in the back and, like, hang out with us. So you could fit, like, maybe 20 people in the DJ booth alone. So probably a couple of wild shit happened behind us. But, like, off the top of my head, I can't nah, think nothing. exactly yeah, as to yeah, what. Yeah. There was a lot of hooking up in that back booth. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of like you just slide that in there yeah, alone, people, I'm just yeah, I'm not naming names but there was a lot of there was a lot of just yeah it was just a lot of action in our back booth I not think. just like hooking up I'm just saying like a lot of just people you know just saying? coming in yeah. people just like simping like you know coming in coming out coming out you don't know what's going on but it was a vibe yeah yeah but, yeah yeah I mean I don't think I mean just listen to your mixes on uh, your mix cloud sound cloud or whatever it's like I don't think that you're you're not that type of DJ where, like, for instance, like, if you're in D.C., yeah, you hear go-go music? Yeah, yeah. It's not like, like, I remember, uh, who said it? Gold Link. Yeah. Gold Link was like, man, when you hear, um, when you hear hip-hop music, some hard shit, you'd be like, oh, shit, man, something might pop off tonight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know I mean, when you hear go-go music, it's like, someone's dying tonight. <laughs> Word? <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. In that's this, you know, crazy. I, I don't know where he, where he said it. He's like, yo, man, if, if you're in D.C. and someone starts playing go-go music, it's not, oh, if something's gonna pop off, it's like, Someone's that's gonna just, die tonight. Somebody's like something about go-go music just like makes you just like rap makes you feel a certain type of way. Go-go music just makes you feel a completely another type of way. Really? I thought yeah. go-go was more like you know like I don't know, man. Instrument I thought, I, yeah, based. Like, yeah, and, yeah. 
I think it's just like the the rhythm just gets. I I don't know. I don't know. I, I just you know you know. Yeah. Anyways, but I don't think your music goes that nah, route nah, at all. Nah. I mean, like we try to really get it popping. Like you know, it's not like the little John days when like oh shout out the little like, shout people out the little John days. People yeah. like I ain't never scared. Like it, and little John you know, three six. Back yeah, in three, the day. but I mean, it's kind of back to that aspect with like Shaq West and mm-hmm. and Travis Scott with people just pushing each other all over the place. With that. With that shit could pop off, but I mean, it's not like you know he playing like hard mob deep and like oh, niggas shit. about to fight and yeah, shit. Like yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. like nah, that that never happens in the yeah. city like that. Nah. Well, I mean, yeah, I was just playing hoop yesterday, and uh-huh. uh, his, uh, brother from Toronto, he was like just moved out here for acting, or whatever. He's like, you know, I love the city, I love the city, but he's like, um, we were playing with this guy, he's calling a lot of fouls, or whatever, right? Yeah, he's like, I love the city, but um. Uh, homeboy's kind of soft. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. City city's kind of soft, yeah, just yeah. in general. And I'm like, first off, that's not my homeboy. He's just white. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah. I, I've never seen him in my life, and yeah. he is calling some bitch shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, hey, yeah, like city's kind of soft in general. And I'm like, yeah, like this the city is kind of yeah, soft. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, like yeah. you know, what I'm saying, I'm not like trying to glorify violence or anything like that. But I'm just but, saying, generally, yeah. it's just funny because when you get together with someone from another city, and like so, you know, he was bodying me up like crazy. You know, mm-hmm. hard fouls, old school type basketball. Yeah. He's from the East Coast, and they play different. they play different. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're a hooper, you yeah. know, right? So they play different out there. And you know, he was following me hard. I was following him hard right back, and we were just letting him play because we yeah. were just playing hard. And yeah. it is what it is. All of a sudden, he gets switched off. You know, starts playing this little white guy. And he's, he's like, just calling all foul, types dude. of foul. Yeah. Yo, Yo, why are you pushing me? Why are you pushing me? He's just yeah. pushing to get position. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like no thing. Like he's dapping it up after. Everything's That's it. all good. Mm. You know, like and you know, you start to get a relationship where you're like, um, you don't even have to call fouls because you just like, oh yeah, that was. Exce- That's the homie. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, like, yeah like, that was hoops. excessive. You know, yeah. my bad. You know what I mean? Like whatever. And he was just like, yo, you start trying to start fighting this little white guy. It's just like, oh man, I'm like, and I'm sitting here feeling like all types of responsibility <laughs> <laughs> for this guy. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm saying. Have to step in and and I'm like, like yeah. hey, like you know, excuse my friend. Yeah. And then, and then he, I say, excuse my friend. He gives me this look, like, bitch, I don't know you. And I'm like, yeah. listen, in this in this situation, you know me, okay? Yeah. Just back off. Get yeah, behind yeah, me. yeah. Okay, just relax, <laughs> dude. Like, Hoopers, yo, man. Like we're just watching Hoopers sometimes. Like they, they. <laughs> I don't know if there's a place called Bonzer. It's in Burnaby. No Bonzer. Damn. Like when I used to like hoop there, it's like people just argue. There's yeah. more arguing than hooping. I don't, so I don't Back go, then, I don't, well, go, I don't go there anymore. Yeah, man. me. Either. I mean, I haven't yeah. been there in a minute too because I grew up in Burnaby. Actually, that's why I used to go there. Yeah, but like, uh, like yeah, and like when I used to play there, people would just argue more than they hooped, and I was like, "Yo, fam, I'm, waste of time." I'm not really trying to be here, waste man. Yeah, yeah. Waste but um, yeah, I mean, when it comes to like the club shit, nah, there's not really too many things that really pop off like that yeah, based on like. Yeah, yeah. Based on like songs that we play, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. I definitely get you, man. But I, it, just in general, I think that, uh, yeah, especially with the Hoopers, Bonds is crazy. <laughs> Bonds is crazy. What do you play right now? Oh, man. Honestly, I was playing, um, uh, man, in the summertime. So we were playing, I was playing, uh, well, I was playing a little bit in the Surrey round ball, but I was playing Vancouver round ball, Burnaby round ball, the Vancouver pro am. Yeah. Um, I was going like crazy. And then things just recently picked up like wild. I like, I, uh, set off to you off the podcast and the listeners know I work in wealth management so yeah. uh, you know I've had an, a couple opportunities there to really uh, head some some marketing and some branding things and a Amazing. couple of like um, uh, you know very applied I don't want to say charitable but you know just you know things we're helping out the community with so I've, I've had I had to I've had to transition a little bit mm-hmm. um, and go a lot towards business and uh, you know I've had some opportunities so I've kind of had to go a little bit that route and I've which means I'm not playing ball That's I've been much. playing ball since like the summer I played the other day yeah but l- low-key like right now my girlfriend's actually literally playing more ball than me and that's pissing really? me off honestly she's playing like, <laughs> she's playing like once or twice a week right now she's playing in a league and then she plays rec yeah and uh she's playing like once or twice a week I'm playing like once, once or twice month. a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Holy shit. So it's brutal, man. The thing about basketball is like, I'm a worse person when I don't play basketball. Why, you get in the mood? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, grumpy? I, I don't know. Like, not even that. Just like, I feel like when I play basketball, uh, I'm sound like a hippie here, but when, when I am when I play basketball, I'm more relaxed. I'm more yeah. meditative. I'm a calmer person. I mm-hmm. really don't get annoyed. I'm impossible to piss off. Mm-hmm. And... um you just notice, like you're sitting in traffic, and like, man, like fuck that guy, cut me off. Like, yeah, b- yeah. Before it'd be For like no reason. Before it'd be like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. you know, take, yeah, sure. I guess there was some space there, you know, like yeah. take that shit. But it, yeah, so I'm like, 
it's bad for me to not play basketball. I coach basketball a lot. I've been coaching a lot less just because of business or whatever. Yeah, so, fair enough. man, I wish, I wish. This, there's certain things you need in your life. Like, yeah. There's just certain things. That's I've, a fact. You know, you know, you're a hooper. Yeah, you know what I'm like, saying? Yeah, I used to, when I used to hoop, I used to be like, I don't I don't play as much at all. Right. Like, even sometimes when my guys are like, yo, you just go hoop. It's like, I'm kind of busy, bro. I got, yeah, yeah, yeah real, I got some yeah. other shit. But, like, I, I'm really, in terms of, like, staying in shape or whatever, like, I'm really starting to, uh, you know, get into a better habit of going to the gym mm-hmm. and, like, you know, being active at, at least. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. with the lifestyle that we, that we have. It's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that could be dangerous, man. Yeah, you can you can lose yourself. In you that. can lose yourself, yeah. and, and and you know you just have to like discipline yourself and like uh, you know maybe do a little less drinking, maybe say no to a couple of shots. How does that work, man? You're the DJ. Everyone's trying to buy you shots. Yeah, see, I mean, it's How do you hard, not just it's get hard loaded to say no. Every set? It's hard to say no, right? Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's you know sometimes it could come across disrespectful when somebody like wants to give you a shot and you're like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, that's you don't want to diss the person like yeah, that. Yeah. So it's like sometimes you got to take it. Sometimes you got to just like, thanks, man, yeah. dump it out. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh, this shit yeah. was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, nah. Sometimes you know, I don't really. I'm not gonna lie and say I don't really drink that much. Like you know, being in that industry, it's kind of part of it. But I definitely cut down on like the consumption of it. No doubt. Or how I drink it. You no know what I mean? Like, I used no to doubt. take shots just for no reason. Oh, you want drinks? You want this? Boom, boom. But it's like, you know, if it's a party, let's, let's turn up and shit. But it's like, you know, um, I try to balance it out with exercising and, like, eating better. And, mm. like, you know, and that's pretty much it, man. That's, that's uh, I don't really hoop as much. I wish I could, but. Uh, so what are you on? Are you on the weightlifting? Are you on the running? Are you, like, out here doing spin classes? Are you a yoga yeah, guy? What do you want, I'm doing, man? I'm doing, like... What's the, what's the, what's the top like, DJ in Vancouver doing for exercise? Uh, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, kind of Yeah, interested. nah, I'm doing, like... In just, as of recent, I've been doing a little bit of, like, you know, boxing. Oh, word. Yeah, yeah, doing some, um like, a lot of circuit workouts. Like, no way, you know, okay. you go into certain classes and then... Um, you know, there's like different type of stations and like Cro- CrossFit-ish kind of CrossFit-ish, but yeah. not really. Yeah. CrossFit is more like just like straight like lifting. CrossFit's like, crazy. CrossFit's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I'm not yeah. really into that, but and plus I got like my homegirl Jenna. She's like an amazing uh, trainer in the city. Okay, and she trains me like a couple times a week. So mm-hmm. I'm not really trying to get like super buff. I just want to be like athletic, Health. healthy. Health. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. she's been helping me out with like. By pushing me and like you know training me like because when i go to the gym if i go to the y for example i don't know what the fuck i'm doing <laughs> i'm just doing curls and shit bench yeah, press yeah. but it's like all right cool i could do that but at the end of the day there's different ways to exercise really right so she's kind of teaching me the ropes and, and helping me out a lot so i've been doing that uh mostly but i want to get into yoga too though man yeah I, i've never uh, done yoga in my life never never once never once and i'm in vancouver fam it's the yoga capital of yeah, the world, yeah, yeah. man. Like, come on. The Lulu's Lulu born Lulu here. Lulu's popping. Like, yeah, come yeah. on now. Jesus I Christ. don't know what I'm doing, man. Play, you, you got a girl? I got a girl. Right, you know, maybe you shouldn't do yoga. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's where they all at? Uh, I ain't going to say nothing. Yeah, um, no, that's cool. But um, yeah. I've heard. Yeah. I've heard. Uh, no, man, I actually got a. Uh, I got this one guy who's a dope instructor. And, uh, you know, he's cool. But there's a lot of um above average looking people looking people yeah, that yeah. like to attend such classes as previously mentioned yeah with uh, <clears throat> a large amount of them too right large a large a wide selection of buffet <laughs> nah, nah, sorry <laughs> buffet. <laughs> yeah. yeah there's a lot of people there yeah um, yeah <laughs> i want i want to ch- i want to check out his class just out of curiosity just, just exactly right you know yeah. like yeah yeah it, it is what it is but yeah. um it's actually I never got any yoga at all, ever, ever, ever. But I'm trying to. I'm actually on a hiatus right now, a little bit from basketball training. I was doing a lot, yeah. like seven days a week, like multiple clients, and like it, it was getting, it was super getting wild, too much. Yeah. super wild. And um, uh, I only have a level one certification, so I've actually taken some time off. I'm trying to get like a level three certification. I'm trying to get some uh, private certification. I'm trying to get my personal training. I'm trying to 
find different ways to attack. Like I'm working with a nutritionist right now. Yeah. I'm working with, um, uh, I actually will be working with a yogi, um, trying to uh, figure out breathing techniques okay. uh, for basketball and, and, you know, a lot of different mobility and, and stuff like that. Uh, done a couple of sessions with, uh, shout out Nick Lowe at Myo Detox. He's been, I uh, works a lot with uh, Joey Haywood from the Joey, city. Yeah, yeah, um, I know Joey, yeah. And so I'm, I've really taken a hiatus. I, I, I have a core group of guys that I will just never leave behind because yeah, they're amazing. For and, sure. Uh, but I've really taken a, a kind of step back and, and trying to reevaluate and find a new way. I think that we look at training very one dimensionally. That's right. Um, you know, like skills training, don't get me wrong, the fundamentals and, and, and skills training in general is very, very important. But again, I think a lot of times with sleep and nutrition and meditation, uh, breathing key, techniques, man. mobility. I think these are all really slept on, um, you know, areas of, of training of and things training. that can have a huge effect. Like, for instance, Kobe Bryant just recently came out and said he learned to tap dance when he was uh, uh, playing uh, around, I think it was like 2010, wow. so he could work on his footwork and work on his ankle strength. That's so like, let's, like all I'm saying is like, I'm too young to have any answers. Like yeah. I'm just, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to look at myself and be like, I'm too young to have the answers. I, I yes, I can give great workouts, but I want to go into a very highly detailed, High, yeah, detailed and, like and really dive know deep. every aspect of this. Yeah. And like, I think there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat, obviously, mm. but yoga is a huge part of that. So I've just been trying just this year, uh, meditating every day and yoga once a week nice well, yoga, what's, what's your technique when it comes to meditation well because i honestly like sometimes i try to meditate and i just fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> real I'm talk like, that's like, an yeah, honest man like, right there i'm cowing i'm just like I, yeah. I, I don't know what i'm doing but it's like you know it's a process of just i gotta you gotta learn how to meditate you do have to learn how to meditate so i uh, I want to say around February, January of this year, 2018, we, I, I, I read a book on uh, Buddhism. Okay. And I'm not a religious guy, but I, you know, I love to study that stuff. I'm very interested in, and Buddhism is something that, you know, I'm from Hornby. I'm a hippie guy or whatever. And yeah, I've always found it interesting. So I, I started to deep dive on it. And then of course, meditation is a huge part of Buddhism and I got into it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I never finished the book, really should have finished the book, but yeah. I got stuck on the meditation part and the way it introduces uh, me to it in that sense was a lot of meditation will get you first off to take account of your body, yeah. um, different parts of your body, pay attention to, you know, your, your, your breathing, your, yeah, your, yeah, your breathing, um, your innards, see what's actually try to actually like, can you feel your small intestine? Can mm -hmm. you actually feel your stomach? Mm -hmm. Can you actually feel your abs? Like, can you actually feel what's going on in these places mm -hmm. in your body? That's one way to do it. Um, the way that I, has been successful for me, um, has been, like you said, breathing techniques. Yeah. Um, and just slowly trying to ramp up the time. Like the first time, like I'm a weirdo. So like first time I was like 15 minutes, let's go. 15, yeah. min 15 minutes of meditation is damn time. near impossible. Yeah. Like it's like, I'm at like, I'll go anywhere from five to 10 right now and okay. I've been doing it for a whole year and I'm like struggling, you know what I'm saying? It's, wow. it's tough. We had, um, uh, Lucky Lifestyle on who's an Iron Man. He's big on human optimization. He's mm. like, man, I couldn't even do five minutes. And I spend like 70% of my time thinking about other stuff uh, when I'm supposed to be meditating. That's sort of, that's that's the issue I had. Like, it's like, I'm sitting there because I, I, li I actually listened to this, I guess it was like an, auto, uh, an audio book by yeah. Russell Simmons and he spoke about bandit meditation. Yeah. And there was like a whole pro, uh, the whole section talking about how to actually like approach it and like mm. the breathing techniques and and I try to do that. So what does he say? What does he say? I can't I can't quote it. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll email you the book, sure. the, yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah, audio. Yeah. But um, yeah, like they talk about breathing and and and, and take you know, <clears throat> try to increase your time on a daily basis, right? And just like relax and tilt your head back and. You know, try to do it every day at the same time and kind of keep a routine to it. Mm. But it's like I tend to either always overthink or I just, you know, just pass out. Like I'm just out. I'm yeah. just not. Yeah. And I met it. Like, you know, I wake up, like, was that meditation or was that me just being relaxed and just. Or was that me sleeping? Me or what sleeping. The fuck was like, that? exactly. So I wasn't really understanding the whole process of the whole. Man. But yeah. I definitely want, I, I, I'm sure I need. Um, you know, to find a way to do that because, you know, just by reading different type of books or whatever, they always talk about like routine and like daily routines are important and meditation is important. So, I mean, I need to get half that part of my lifestyle, man. Man, I, I hear you for sure. I think it's 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 really challenging, man. It, yeah. it, especially like, you know, you know, you have an athletic background, you'd be like, 
you know, running sprints is hard or, yeah. you know, lifting weights is hard, man. Th this is really hard. Like, yeah. it's like, so the way I've gone into it has been simply working with different breathing techniques, mm -hmm. whether that's like uh, elongated inhales and shorter outhales or whether that's holding for a period of time mm -hmm. or whatever that may be and trying to go through that way. Um, and literally just... So again, like I said, can you take account of what's actually happening inside you? Like how do you, how do your organs actually feel? Have you ever tried to feel and have a sense of your organ? Like I can feel my hand. Mm. I know my hand's here. I know it's yeah. touching this cloth. Or I can feel my voice vibrating in this microphone. Mm. I can't feel what's happening in my stomach. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I can't feel what's happening in my abdomen. How do I feel that? And so like just trying to take account the way I do it. And I don't know if this is the way to do it. I've read some stuff, but I'm no expert. Yeah. So it's like deep elongated inhales through the nose as you're inhaling just trying to physically feel like the feeling of breathing like yeah the feeling inhaling. of breathing we don't yeah. feel that yeah we don't we don't know what that feels like until you truly try to take account of that yeah feeling so not so much focusing on inhaling but focusing on the actual feeling of it of air being in mm -hmm. pausing for a quick sec like not like half a second and the actual feeling of like carbon dioxide coming out wow Right. And that is very difficult. So mm -hmm. for me, I'm a, like, I need problems to solve. Yeah. So that is the way I've tricked my mind into going, okay, let's solve this problem of figuring what this actually feels like. Cause I'm like you where I have a lot going on in life and, and I'm like, Oh shit, did I do that? Oh yeah, man, exactly. I gotta send that invite for dinner. Fuck, is he coming here? I'm on this guest list. Like, yeah. right. There's a million things going on, but it, so I can trick my mind into, into being like, okay, no, 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 let's figure out what this actually feels like. Okay. Let's fi and then if I figure that out in the process of it, so say I do a 10 minute session, mm. if I feel like, okay, I'm really getting a f uh, handle on this. Mm. Cause it's only, it's just one thing, just focusing on one thing. And I'm like, okay, then I'll start to try to explore other parts of my body. I'm like, okay, oh man, like I, I really fucked up my hip the other day. Like, what is that feeling like in this position? Yeah. Right. And not think about a thought, Anything. but just think about that particular physically right here. Yeah. And that has worked for me, but I don't know, man. I think every human is different. Yeah. And I don't know how to, I don't know. I want to know yeah. if, the, if there's meditation experts listening to this right now, please, I, like I need out. to know. Yeah, me too. I need to know, but I will say one thing though, is that it has, I don't want to be too corny here, but it has significantly changed a large part of my life. Uh, Lucky put it best. He was on a podcast. Uh, ah, man, we've done too many podcasts. He was on a podcast five podcasts ago, let's say. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he he said that uh, the way it was put to him was meditation is like putting on a layer of protection for the day. It's like putting on armor for the day. Amazing. And I was like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. And he was like, well, um, I wake up at five. I'll meditate for 10 minutes, you know, somewhere around 5, 36 a.m. And anything that comes in, someone cuts me off in traffic, I just look at it for what it is. Yeah. So, and he said that it gives him that ability to not feel emotion, but to control emotion. Amazing. That's powerful. That's powerful. <clears throat> That's huge. That That's is crazy. Huge. And I, I think it's cool too that, um, you know, I could be wrong about that, but I heard that they're teaching that in schools now for like younger kids. No like way. That meditation. Yeah. Wow. At least certain schools. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing that because yeah, I mean, maybe some fucking private schools or something. God damn. Yeah. Wait, I don't know. That's crazy. That's, wow. That's big. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's great for the for like school programs right now. Yeah. I mean, I would love my kids to like learn how to control themselves and like breathe and like instead of just like letting them play around. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah. it's great, you know, to develop that habit as a, as a child, as an infant, and and it's keep so, that keep yeah. that lifestyle going. You know, as a, as a teenager, as an adult, man. It's so hard to. It's so hard to do. Like I, I, I don't know. For me, like you, like oh, five minutes a day. You have five minutes a day. Yeah. Just to be like, say you're at home. You're like, man, I gotta, like, I gotta put the laundry in. Like, I gotta do the dishwasher. Like, yeah. fuck, I don't need. I, I, I need those five minutes. Yeah. Bitch, no, you don't. Yeah. You know, yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chill out. You know. It's and plus, like, it's yeah. like so many other fucking distractions, like this, this, you that fucking mean? thing. Yeah, yeah. That's huge. The man. crazy part is like, so what I use now, I use this app called uh, Calm. Uh, I paid the yearly. I pay like sixty dollars for this app. That's how God one way damn. I. That's one of the ways I got myself into doing. I'm gonna pay sixty dollars for this app for a yearly subscription. Yeah, and it has a lot of different like guided meditations. It has like you know uh, like rain sounds and stuff like that, which is crazy because yeah, I have to put my phone on airplane mode. Yeah, and then do it or whatever. But it's like you you do meditation to get away from it, and then you're still using it, which that's is like up. ideally I would love to be able to just be in a room with nothing and and actually be able to physically do this for 15 minutes but mm -hmm. that is like that might take me 10 years to do man honestly i don't i don't know that's to me people that just can do that 
Yeah, Damn. yeah, that's 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 a, that's a skill, man. That's such a skill. Like you said, if anybody has like tips and and, and, and wants to reach out, please do because I need that shit in my yeah, life, yeah, man. Yeah. So what else you trying have. to add? What else you trying to add? You say you, um, you're getting on your health tip right now. Yeah, I'm getting on my health tip. It's pretty. I mean, when it comes to when it comes to you know, you know, physically being healthy, it's cool and all. But like the reason why I brought out yoga and like meditations because you know, as important as physical health is mental health is too you know what i mean especially with with uh you know as as somebody that's somewhat glued to social media that shit could get to your head you know what i mean like you may think you know there's all kinds of everybody has their own little like insecurities and shit so but if you let that get to your head and, and let social media fuck you up i feel like meditation and and getting away from that would really help anybody so i mean i'm trying to low-key control my my thoughts you know what i mean yeah. sometimes you fucking overthink things and like yeah yeah so you know that poison we call social media is is, is not good for especially in this industry too because it's like we can i kind of have to be on there to promote what That's i'm doing business. it's my business it's, it's, it's this is my business card this is my website this is my my everything this showcases my lifestyle like so um but that could also like make me insecure mm. that could also like make me overthink things and 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 i really truly believe that if i meditate and try to you know have a different state of mind and control my emotions like you mentioned mm. yeah it could really help i'm with you man I yeah feel yeah you. yo pause on that i gotta take a piss hell yeah, yeah me too me too <laughs> <laughs> but to, your, to your point yeah to your point i remember just uh just i think a couple of weeks ago apple implemented their new uh, screen time thing. Do you see that? With like different people yeah. on his FaceTime? No, 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 no. With the right. uh, with how much time you spent oh, on your okay, phone? Gotcha, actual gotcha. screen time. I didn't. Right? I didn't. You tell me about you that. You're not up on that. No, Put I'm not on your that. phone once in a while. So what is it? It's like uh, no, so what it, it limits you. Go ahead. It can limit you. It can limit you. So what it does is it just shows you how much time you spend on your phone, how many pickups you have, Damn. how many notifications you get in a day mm -hmm. from what apps are those notifications coming from, um, how long you spend on each app, obviously, and you can put like restrictions on it, I guess, or whatever. Um, and they actually, that used to be a brand, that used to be like a sub category of apps that would yeah. like track, so they just killed that shit for sure. Um, but now everyone's seeing like, oh, Yo, I, I spend six hours on my phone. Fam, yeah. <laughs> right? That's crazy. Like, the amount of time I think I spent on... Okay, let me tell you this, how bad it is with me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Fam, <laughs> I wake up, and the first thing I do is check Instagram. Like, what am I doing? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to... Like, just, not, not because I need to, it's just a habit. Habit. Not because I want to, or I'm looking for something particular, it's just like... I, I'm, I check the time, then like naturally click on the app. Your thumb just goes yeah, there. Yeah, and then I catch myself in the middle of it. I'm like, oh, what am I doing? I just why close am I here? it. Yeah, like why yeah. am I yeah. checking like timelines? Eight in the morning, what am yeah, I doing yeah. here? Like, yeah. And I'm just like, all right, cool. Like, and then I drop it. You know what yeah, I mean? It's, yeah. But it's just like to, to, for me to develop that habit, it's pretty bad, man. For me to have that habit, I'm sorry. It's pretty bad, man. It's pretty bad, but it, it's like, um, it's so, I don't want to use the word necessary. I was gonna say that the flip side of it is, 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 you know, to have that platform is is very beneficial for everything that we're doing. Yeah, it's true. You know what I'm trying to say it's so. True. It's like I don't want to sit here and shit on like social media because it helped all of us connect. Yeah, no, very true, very you know true. I mean? I mean, on that same tip, though, I mean, Instagram, for for instance, like I'm at when when I was at a thousand followers, mm. I might have gotten better engagement now when I'm at like. 2.5 honestly do you care about followers oh bro I, you why you gotta put me on spot like that yeah. bro, I'm, not, I'm talking about analytics yeah, right yeah, here yeah. Not, not that it matters <laughs> pause yeah um i see all you motherfuckers unfollowing and shit no i'm yeah. just kidding i'm just kidding um and, and seriously though like where i was going with that was that it it um not that it matters how many followers you have. God mm. damn it. Now, see what's going to happen, bro, is now people are going to cut that up, take yeah. it out of context. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Oh, this guy, podcast, oh, some blast. He's all that. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. Fuck this guy. Yeah. I get it. Don't worry. <laughs> Fuckers. That's the thing, man. Anyways, um, the way it's moved now, when uh, the feed went from chronological to the algorithms or whatever, right? Yeah. Everyone lost like tons of engagement right. or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, the reason why I know that is because I, I've done, I've worked with and 
managed a bunch of uh, business accounts. Okay. And you just see like, as soon as they made that switch, it was just like, Phew. yeah, it was off. Mm-hmm. And it, it's actually, if you go back to social media, uh, uh, not on what it does for business or anything yeah. like that, just like on a, on social a friend, aspect, a fan, yeah, on yeah. a social things, it actually pisses me the hell off because I'm, it, I'm just seeing what's popular. I'm not necessarily seeing like a lot of my friends are not don't have popular social media followers. Right. Like I, yeah. and I truly do care about whatever it is they're, they're, they're up doing. to, or you know, like I, I truly do want to see that in whatever order it comes in. Like I just want to see it. I don't want to have to like all oh, every once in a while. Oh, yo, shit, yeah, what what's happened with so and so? Oh mm-hmm. shit, fourteen. No, what you got married? Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, you're right. That, like, that I kind of noticed that, that too. That fucks with me a little bit. Yeah. I don't like that at all, but. But yeah, it is what it is too. Because I'm like, yeah, but um, you're funny. You're funny. You mentioned that because I had no idea it's kind of structured like that now. But it's like, you know, sometimes I scroll through my timeline and it's like certain things. I go to my friend's page, for example, and it's like, what? What? They, yeah, they, like, yeah. yo, you posted like five pictures. I'm and on this, this shit happened all the time. And, yeah, I didn't see like, any I didn't of this. see a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I mean, it doesn't matter. But I was gonna ask you, like, the reason why I asked if you cared about followers. Hit me. It's because uh, I feel like people are judged based on the amount of followers that they have. And and I wonder why. Man. Like, what's your what's your take on that? Like, or let me let me rephrase that question. Would you would you look at me different if I had 50,000 followers and in, in comparison to like 2,500? So would you you would wonder why I have fifty like well, what's no, your whole mentality? No, nah, hold up. So it's gonna sound like a plug. It's not. I swear. When we did this podcast, we made a effort mm-hmm. to be like, we don't care. Let's look at the core of the human being. Mm-hmm. Is this person number one? Like, are they funny? Like, are they fun? They have a good personality. That's right. Right. Number two, are they intellectual? Like, can they intellectualize their thoughts? That's right. And um, number three, do they have this? Do they have a skill set in whatever it is that they Field. do? And yeah. you guys have been listening to podcasts. You know, we've had entrepreneurs, UFC fighters, basketball players, actors, yeah. a million things, right? Mm-hmm. DJs. Um, so we made a conscious effort to not take that stuff into account. Mm-hmm. Now, from a personal aspect. Like, say I go out, great example. I told that story about that guy playing basketball. Yeah. First thing he said, yo, hit me on IG. Mm-hmm. Sure, yo, what's your IG? I'm looking at his follower account right away. Yeah. Out of just naturally. Out of just naturally. naturally I'm like, yeah. oh, shit, yo, 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 like, you know, 2, 3K. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh. Is, you know, is, he, is he popping? Or, yeah. like, you know, what's going on What here, does he right? do? Yeah, what does yeah. he do, right? And then versus someone that is, you know, you look at their IG, they got 200 or 100 or, you know, 90. It's like... Oh, what's this guy like? Does he not have a social yeah, life? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like all of a sudden, I'm like, oh yeah, okay. So that's this great a person. That's that great a person. Yeah, that is fucked up for sure. And I think it just happens subconsciously. That's now, true. that only happens in my mind. Here's the thing: if I if I meet you mm-hmm. online, if I'm mm-hmm. introduced to your the concept of your human mm-hmm. um, online first, then yes, it has a huge bearing. If I meet you in in person first yeah. i don't care you don't care yeah. not a not, no part of me cares yeah that's but a fact. if i have that's my first introduction to you i ain't gonna lie man like naturally there's judgments that come off that and and i i will back to meditation i can see those judgments happening mm-hmm. see those emotions happening and be like oh hold up hold up hold up stop what is that let me change my thoughts what is yeah. what is that like yeah. you can see that pop up take it categorize it be like whoa let's look at that why yeah. did that happen and then and then go from there and you know the, the answer for me is always just you know go meet this person that's it like, <laughs> like, i feel like certain people are intimidated to meet the person or the oh, people man. based on like oh that person got like twenty thousand followers or like even <clears throat> when it comes to like uh i'm assuming when it comes to like you know meeting a girl for example you're like oh shit she got like <laughs> she got like eighteen thousand followers <laughs> man i have facts. no chance you know it's big facts it's like yeah. you, you, you guys shouldn't think like that you know like it's a it's fake like <laughs> like those followers don't mean anything yeah but uh but yeah it's just you know you talking from experience i'm no i'm, nah, I'm just yeah, nah. i'm talking for yeah i'm talking from just you know i know some people that have a lot of followers and it's just the dopest people they're not like as intimidated as mm. intimidating as people may assume they are or you know what i mean or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but at the same time it's like you know uh certain 
when it comes to like a business from outside looking in, you know, certain d- club owners or like DJs or True. you know people that own stuff, they're gonna be like, True. oh, this guy has like fifteen thousand followers. Let me let me book him. Right. Or like they they book you based on like your social media presence, which could be completely bogus and fake. That's the thing, and you know I don't blame them because it's a numbers game for them, but it's like it's not really based on like your skill set. And I'm just looking at it from my perspective, mm-hmm. right? It's just, mm-hmm. and I could sound like a hater, but it's like some people that have like twenty thousand followers are just dweebs. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> no, some of people, course, of course, yeah. Of course, so of it's course, like of course. sometimes it's, it's just this, the, that the numbers game on social media is a funny thing to me, man. It's well, just, it's, it's, I. I I'm not attracted to it. Number one, it can be bought. And no, number two, it has no real bearing. And number three, that doesn't even necessarily mean that, like, there's real people and then there's real people. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to say this, but I'm sorry, it's true. Yeah. Like, like there's there's real people that you will never see anywhere. And, ma- like, they exist, but they don't exist. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And then there's people that are, you know, actively engaged in their community, whatever it is they're doing or um, you, you might actually see them out or you might actually have an encounter with them or they, they, they might actually voice their opinion on something. They might actually leave a comment. Like there's real people and then there's real people, right? right? Yeah. And so like I would rather have, maybe this answers your question better, I would rather have 500 people that are oh, really? truly, like I, I, I get that a lot more now where I'm like I, I would, if that was an option on Instagram, if you could, what if you could pick your followers? Oh, oh shit. I mean you can. Well, you can block people. Yeah, I mean, you could privatize your page and, and kind of pick and choose. Oh, I right? guess, but if they already follow you, no. But if the, the uh, they yeah. could be, they, re, they could request, they request to follow you, and then you could pick and choose. Okay, you know what? Yeah, right. But say if I was to go, if I was to go private right now, yeah, and then so I'd have, I'd have to go through my list and block people. Right. That's the only uh, way. Right now. Yeah. Uh, no, because they're already following you. Yeah, they, but if they already follow me, yeah, right, and then I go. And but but say I don't want them to follow me. Oh, you're gonna have to like unfollow them. Unfollow them and then but they're still following me. Oh back. yeah, you're so right, I'm you're have right. to block to them. Block them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only way, right? Yeah, I think. It's gonna be awkward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some people have the app on their phone that you could tell oh, man, when you don't follow them. Like say if I don't follow you, can, and you have like an a app, notification. Can, yeah, right? notification. Hey, I see touch unfollowed you. It's like yo, what what that would fuck with your head, man. Yo, I've said yeah. I, I mentioned <laughs> yo, I mentioned this before. So like, listen, one, there was a time in my life where I was so busy. And I was like, I need to cut all the bullshit out of my life. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I deleted Facebook for for a while. And um, I don't have Facebook anymore. Yeah, shout too. out to you. Yeah, for real, for real, for real. And uh, I got off everything. And I was like, on Instagram, all oh, this. I'm done Snapchat. I'm done Facebook on Instagram. I'm gonna cut it down to 50, 50 people I follow. Mm. Fifty people, and I want like moguls. I don't even have to know them, but people I'm inspired by, That's right. Diddy, uh, you know, uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, like you know, whoever, like you know, a couple of people, you know, like you know, uh, you know, local CEOs or, or whatever people. I just I, I want to see what they have to yeah. say. Moguls, 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 moguls. So I, I was at like I don't know, like a thousand follow, like I was following a thousand people or something like that. Ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> just down the line. Shredded. Nope, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. Bro, my life got so quiet. Yeah, like my I, my phone stopped blowing up. People thought that I was like not cool. Being with a them. dick. Like, yeah, it was yeah. like no, that no. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to know Joss. I, yeah. I knew him once. You still? I'm still here. Yeah, we hung out dude, on Wednesday. Yeah. I unfollowed you on Friday, yeah. and now I'm trying to do something dude, Saturday. I gave you a ride on Thursday. <laughs> like, literally though. No. Literally though. No. Oh, and all of a sudden, we're not cool. It's like, come on, man. Come on. Because it's like it's it's personal. It's like, yo, yo, what's up with you? You just don't follow me? Yeah. Like, what's like, do I, like do I, do you don't like my photos yeah, or like, like you not fuck with me? Yeah, you no, know? nah, it's just it's 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 crazy, man. But yeah, like I got on Facebook like. It was just oversat. It's not even because it was oversaturated, but I was like, "Why am I? What am I doing? I'd never like why? Why do I have this anymore? You know right. what I mean? Like it's not really. When I started Facebook, it was more like you know to connect with family and everything. But now I have them on WhatsApp, right? So I can yeah. connect with them via WhatsApp, which is still Facebook, is, by the way. Yeah, it's still, still, it's still, still like owned the same it. thing, still but owns, um, yeah. It's, you know, me seeing people's posts. I get it. I, I get, get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not on that. It's too much. Even Instagram, like, if I didn't have the option of uh, having social media, I'd just be, like, low-key. I'm weird. I'm like a, Kendrick said that shit in the verse. I'm like a, like, anti, what do you say? Anti-social extrovert. 
Is that what he's social extrovert? So, an or like a no, I'm an introvert that's social. <laughs> Word. I don't yeah. even know how to break it down. Like yeah. it's kind of like like you enjoy. You I enjoy, enjoy being the conversation, alone, yeah. but it's yeah. like I'm not really the type to really be like. Hey, what's up? Hey, well, yeah, what's, what's up? up? Yeah, 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 I got like you. Like it's, it's it's you know I fuck with, I fuck with like dope people, but it's yeah, like which I'm is not, funny because you're a DJ. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, it's like yeah. you know in, in my field, it's like you know it's not it's not the greatest um like uh, personality trait to have, but um you know people know me like I, I'm pretty social, but it's like. I'm I'm a, I'm slightly reserved in certain areas. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm very that makes like. Sense. Uh, oh, I get it. No, for if sure. I if I didn't have to do it, I wouldn't do it. Type of shit. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. No. I feel, yeah. I feel for sure. I, yeah. I had um. I had. I literally. Literally today, I was reading this article on um just on Facebook and data collection and uh-huh. through work, we do some stuff with um. Uh, you know, privacy and data deletion. So, like, what can you do to? essentially wipe yourself from the web or attempt to do that very yeah. difficult um yeah. obviously so i was reading this thing and and uh a, a lot about you know how facebook tracks you and pixels and these different things and and i'm sitting there and i'm like i, I really don't want this yeah you know like uh, i'm i i know i'm established in terms of you know my peer group and mm-hmm. stuff like i'm not really trying to get a whole bunch of new friends that's you know what I'm saying. Like it's, yeah. it's cool like you're i'm not saying uh, no but i'm just saying i'm good right and exactly. and so i'm like well maybe i maybe i don't need this stuff or one and obviously it's an addiction right for, for sure. sure and uh, to be honest with you if it wasn't for i mean again the training game and now this podcast is like how successful will those two fields be if i delete that stuff <clears throat> i think how, let me ask you this: yeah, How successful would you be if I didn't have with no media? Instagram from the jump? F- from the jump, um, I, I okay for no Instagram. I think it would almost be the same. I'll just put, I'll Damn. just gravitate towards. I'm not, I'm not saying that just the front. Okay. It's obviously going to be way more difficult because, you know, everybody's on yeah, Instagram you get views, and social yeah. media. You get views and you, people kind of get in touch with you directly without even knowing who you are but it's like i'd have to put my work in a different uh platform in a sense like i it'd have to be not on instagram but it's just i'd have a website but how can i promote my website by giving out physical cards that's a different game <laughs> Shit. Yeah. yeah but i mean like think about like back then when we used to have parties like and people still do that people there's still posters in the streets yeah but that's like kind of like a man that's also that's like a nostalgic thing it is but it's like it is but i mean i, I still feel like it's effective though yeah i know yeah i hear you i hear you for sure yeah I mean, but I'm, what i'm saying is that people might go throw a po- throw a bunch of posters up around the city yeah just for to be like oh yeah no like we covered that base we do have posters but like we're not that people won't be like like for instance if you if you post if you have like an instagram um sponsor post you're like yeah i expect roi on that i expect okay. if you yeah. put posters out there you're gonna be like Oh, you know, like I put posters around the city. We should get at least a hundred people here. It's yeah. kind of like, uh. but I mean, like if you, but I mean, you could post posts. You could give, you could put posters around the city. But literally, after say you're promoting, a, I'm promoting Hush, for Hush, example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of know the city because I'm in the industry, right? I have no social media though. Um, I know, kid. Okay, this this Sunday night, there's like a party there, so I'm gonna go out there with flyers. Good point. And just like well, get a team together and just. Everybody that comes out gets a flyer. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Until they get tired. I want to feed them the f- like my, my physical like cards, cards and, and flyers. Fly. Until they get tired, it's like, yo, dude, I know about this. I want to be there. <laughs> Who are you? I want to be annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. I want to find a way to make it happen. But the social media aspect of things you write, if, you know, I probably wouldn't be as accessible. But, um, you know. Because you'd have to give out your phone number. I'd have to give my number and, like, you know, a website or something. Like, yeah, yo, yeah, you yeah, catch yeah. me there. And then on that website, I could just have my, my mixes or whatever. But, right. like but, you said, like, um, it'll be kind of tough because um, Instagram is like people could just, you know, I could put a mix somewhere. I could do a mix and I could post it on my link on the gram. And then people that just follow me, they just click you on just it. Got you know? It, right. Like, it's the ease of access, right? You remember back in the day when um, Diddy had a street team? 
Yeah. I don't know if you're ever, yeah. Man, yeah. street teams, like, they're out there with, like, sticks and, like, posters. And I feel like that type of vibe may come back. Like, social media is so oversaturated, and we're not really seeing what we want to see, like you mentioned, mm. that I feel like we kind of have to go back to, like, the old habits. Damn. You think so, eh? Hey? Yeah, man. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm 100%, like, confident in what I just what i think like i think it's gonna go back to like the old ways like because it's so f you're not even gonna see my i'm gonna I'm a post something and then you might not see it right but i have to give you a flyer or put flyer on your car or something yeah. or you know be I'm, I'm be out and actually like or shoot you a text or give you a call like yeah. i'm gonna invite you to this party i hope i see you out there yeah because like social media people we got comfortable with it like i when it first started yeah, true, it was true, like true. yeah when it first started it's like oh shit it's, did you send invites or did you see yeah. did you see the flyer on did social media? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, I'm definitely gonna be do you be there. But now it's like it's like thousands of fees. Oh, it's like trillion. it's too much. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's just like all right, cool. Like, oh, yeah, I came across a video, but and then Whatever, you forget I about it. Saw eighteen videos. So, yeah. yeah. So but, okay. So what's the timeline? What do you think? Like so you yeah sure you're gonna go out here say that yeah we're gonna revert a little bit more to the physical si yeah. uh, thing and actually talking to people. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen next year? Do you think it's going to happen two I, years from now? Five, I, 10, 20? I think, I think it's like, I think within the next couple of years, like, yeah. I'm not even, yeah, 2020, people are still, like, I mean, social media is still going to be booming. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like a lot of people are going to gravitate towards having teams, like, on some puff shit, like having street teams and having people in corners. Gangster, of, by the way, too. Yeah, it's yo, G. I, I, I was like a kid, and I was like, yo, man, like you part of that street team? Like, yeah. Yo, we're going over, like, <laughs> wearing all the same T-shirts. Like, yo, people the Sean John, that was, yeah. that was so corny back and, in the day. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah. like having, the, you know, people in the corners and giving out flyers and, you know, having, like, because the thing is, yeah. if I give you a flyer, if I give you my card, and say you forget about it right and then you go home one day you check your pockets you're gonna see that flyer in your cars. you're gonna be like oh shit like that's the homie he's having a party you know, yeah in a couple of days or whatever so it's like i feel like that is more memorable than me you seeing my feed you know what man like you might not be wrong you might not be wrong for real no i remember back um someone would have god I, i'm forgetting but now but it was like they'd have an event say at fortune or whatever and they'd hire three kids to stand outside of fortune like if, if the show was on a saturday they'd be yeah. there thursday afternoon yeah friday afternoon and then all saturday be like yo 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 uh um jay-z's coming here or or, or whoever's coming here tonight yeah. like yo take this take this take this take this take this or like even real back i remember they used to have um oh man <laughs> uh they used to have remember that stack of cds of course you remember yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, like you could buy at stables or whatever it was like a hundred blank cds and yeah, then you yeah. could just burn whatever you yeah. wanted on the bitches like, yeah, yeah 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 like you know like you know, <laughs> yeah, you, know yeah. you know and and they used to just like have little demos of like you know, I, I don't want to say it was snack because I, I might be wrong but um like just like the ripper yeah yeah oh, okay. I, I i think i have maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm making that up but like I remember just like, you know, relatively unknown artists at the time would just like be outside the venue. They were playing at like three days. They wouldn't be out, but like their team would be out giving out, you yeah. know, like 10 songs here, 10 songs. Like, oh, check this out, check this out. Come Saturday, come Saturday. That was yeah. like, uh, like I, that was really dope. And I feel like that's missing now. I that's don't feel missing. like. I, feel, I miss that. You I know love what I mean? that. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like, oh, shit. I mean, like now that's not never going to happen again. No, yeah. I mean, CDs are dead, but it's like people actually promoting an event or like something that's popping. That's like, yo, shit, this is going on there now. Boom. Yeah. Like, there's a flyer. There's a free ticket for you and people come through it's annoying don't get me wrong like but it's like that annoyance has an effect like it works people are gonna be like oh shit okay yeah you, like, you garner interest exactly you garner interest no 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 doubt uh i'm yeah I, there's a lot of shit i'm getting nostalgic now but like like limewire back in the day yeah bro i loved like just going trying to find the different torrents to like try to get different shit because yeah, i would yeah. hear shit would drop like i remember literally like, like dj clue yes exactly bro you don't <laughs> yeah. even know man uh like that pit back that pit back in the day mm -hmm. um who else was dropping shit who kid yeah oh man but uh, yes <laughs> and like i remember like in the city too when <laughs> it used to be super dope like uh certain nights used to have um parties and it's like yo dj so-and-so's dropping a mixtape and you know yeah. get, get like the first hundred people get like the free mixtape and you're excited just because like i fuck with this dj yeah. i'm gonna go to that party and I, get want a free I want the mixtape i need that tape and it's like that the people had different ways to like promote events and like attract people you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah. so it's like nowadays it's tough like i mean 
I would love to have a mixtape release party for Hush, for example. But it's like I don't have a physical mixtape to give you. I'll give cool. you a link. That might be kind of cool. What if y'all bring that back? That'd be kind of tight. But it's like who really has? Nobody like, has CD players anymore. Valid. I'll valid, give you like a valid card. point. I could give you like a USB. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not yeah. the same. Yeah. It's like, like if you got tape players or some shit. It's yeah. Just like no. How do I play this? What yeah. Do how do I like? What do you want? Yeah. What do you want me to what do, do with I do? this? Yeah. yeah. Do I, yeah. So, but like I miss that aspect of things. But I I feel like you know, the vibes are there, man. Even like you know that may be a little bit off topic but like even having parties like drake had a 2000 you saw it on instagram he oh. had a he had a party in la and it was like the theme was 2000s oh yeah i did see that you yeah, know what i mean like that. that type yeah, of throwback vibe. jerseys and shit throwback jerseys and and like that's people pe- people miss that or they wish they were part of that yeah, yeah, yeah. like i kind of wish i was part of like the dj era when people were carrying crates oh man because that that that's like your party is slamming because automatically if i'm having a party i'm gonna need your help to help me with my crates bring the crates yeah and then you're gonna tell your homie yo Icy's having a party you're coming through i need yeah. some help and then they're gonna bring their friends yeah so automatically me coming in i'm coming t- 20 30 deep 20 deep <laughs> just yeah, a dj just, yeah, yeah 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 and yeah. it's like and you bring your friends boom boom but now it's like you know <laughs> It is what it is, but now we just post like flyers on Instagram, and it's like hit me up for guest list, hoping for people to DM. Come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, I get that. Well, that was oh man, I remember watching a, a NWA movie and seeing Dre with the that was so cool. That got me fired Hard, up. Eh? I love that. Come through, and it's like when he got kicked out or whatever, he like had to put his records in a, in a whip. I was yeah, like, oh, that's yeah, that's that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. When like we were like in a cusp of that, like just bro, like, yeah, for real. That was like. Oh man, I see. I was on and I was on CDs. I'm be like, again, you got a couple years on, them, bro. So it's like, I remember on the CDs, like used. <laughs> so going, I don't even know if this even happened, but like, where I was at coming up was the DJ would literally come up. They would load it if they were popping DJ. Yeah. They'd have their MacBook, and then they'd have huge like CD, book? cd book yeah 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 of all but it was all like you rarely see any actual cd it was all like burn shit mm. and then we'd just be flipping through that flipping through that and boom pop that in take that boom yeah <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah and i remember like a a buddy of mine back in the day would just like he wanted to get into djing and his job was just to like, like take the cd when he when the dj took it out yeah. and just put, put it, it in back the right in spot. <laughs> that's so dope dude yeah that's the vibe so like i mean and you do the same thing with records or whatever but yo records are actually making a comeback that's what i'm saying yeah Yeah, records are making a comeback but yeah some people still like some djs in the city too they do like it's pretty cool to have like uh parties and they play like 45s actual vinyls it's super cool like actual vinyls and it's a vibe and it sounds crisp and it has like that just it, it just looks cool yeah you know what i'm saying like yeah but uh I kind of gravitated low key towards um, just using CDJs now because, uh, I mean, for me personally, you know, I spent so much money on fucking needles. Like they break and it's like, yo, man, like I'm yeah. annoyed with that. Yeah. And my backpack is way lighter if I don't, you know, I don't have like slip masks and records. And, yeah, yeah. and, 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 and it's uh, way easier. Yeah, it's way easier. I just come in and I have like, you know, my laptop, my laptop stand, headphones, and then charger and i just go in you know what i mean like yeah. cdj and like a usb just to make sure like i have like the, the everything works out yeah you're good i'm all good so still though man like if, even when you see someone like actually spinning on records it's like so cool like yeah. even just like you see them spinning they flip the mix over they flip that one disc boom right put here. it back then but bro, yeah that's fire that's fire and, and, that's fire. and, like, and used to get booked based on you know like yo, this this guy, this this this, this particular DJ, that's the only DJ with that record or those records. Oh, so I have to book you. You couldn't or like, get it. Yeah, you know nobody else has that record. Or like he's sick at playing dancehall music, or he has all the African music, so he's getting booked for. Because you couldn't find part. the music. You couldn't find the music. Like certain DJs just master certain things. So it's like, you know, yo, homie has like doubles of like the new song that came out last week. So yeah, he's getting yeah, the yeah. gig. I have to hire him. You know what I mean? But yeah. now it's like everybody has access to everything man that's so funny yeah he's got the doubles on that one or like hey yo he's got like um oh we had mr martini on here uh-huh. uh hopefully but yeah this will be out we'll see i don't know it's not out right now but it will be out um and he was telling a story about 
Mr. Martini from Dipped or whatever. Yeah. I used you to work know. at Dipped. Oh, yeah, I know shit. Dipped. Yeah, I know, I, know, I, know, I know Martini. Yeah, that's oh, a big homie. Go back to that one. Hold yeah, on yeah. one second. Well, he was like, he was like, man, I remember going to like um, uh, All Star Weekend in Atlanta. And I had the new G unit, and then just everyone's whip that I hopped in. I was like, yo, 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 let me put the CD in. I yeah. got the new G unit. I got the <laughs> yeah, new G yeah. unit. Yeah. <laughs> he like, was like, just get hype. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, shit. I didn't even know G unit had new shit. You yeah. got it? Oh, yeah. damn. Yeah. And he was like super hype off that. And I missed that rarity because, again, the other thing, too, damn, the other thing, too, is when I was a kid, hold up, backstory to this. When I was a kid, I first started making money. I, I I worked at I worked as a dishwasher when I was like 12, 13. I was a bigger kid, so I could get away with it. And yeah, it was totally illegal. Yeah, uh, I won't say the name of the place. <laughs> it's like literally child labor. But anyways, I would make. But before that, um, I would get on um like Napster, LimeWire. Yeah, and I Kazaa, would. You ever heard yeah, of Kazaa? No, what's that? That was like the same thing, like LimeWire, oh, really? like Napster, Kazaa. Come dude, on, dude, Lime, dude, bro, LimeWire did me so good. <laughs> no. U-Torrent, oh, it was perfect. Yeah, it was, yeah, I didn't yeah. even need it, anyways. So I would like go there and I would just search, 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 search for like the whatever the dopest shit was, and then I would take that, I would get the boom, I would get the fifty pack of the CDs, right. and I would make my own disc, Mixed and I would hustle them for ten bucks a pop because the CDs were only, man. yeah, they don't they. they the CDs were expensive back in the day. They cost me like five dollars a pop or something like that. Like they were expensive. Yeah. People don't know that because now a CD is a CD like is a, trash. A, yeah. But I would hustle that, and then I would. Um, but it was so dope because you had access to new music and you curated it in a very cool way, and then your only access was a physical exchange, That's right? That's what I'm saying. And so like your playlist became like very valuable. Like I remember, like come on now, like <clears throat> even in 20. 11 2012 like a dope playlist was yeah. like yo like the shit they, like, yo, yo, like yo, that yeah I, if I you're like that. yo come over i got a playlist it's yeah. like or like yo with the shardy like yo shardy like, yeah i, I got, got the perfect tape for you i yeah. got something for you right? <laughs> you know what i'm saying that used to be a thing yeah, right yeah, yeah. now it's like spotify like you know bedroom tune yeah, yeah. and, and then it's then there it's already curated for you. dude I, I remember when i first started doing my thing i made a mixtape for my girl for like her her birthday because she's like an r&b she loves r&b yeah. and i was like yo mad brownie points after that like i made her like a I did, I did, uh, I, after I made her just mixtapes, all R&B music, and I started doing like, uh, every Valentine's Day, I used to come up with this mixtape called, uh, the sex tape. And then it's all like R&B, super sexy music that I had, I I had like four or five of them online on my SoundCloud. So, um, but yeah, back then it's like, I made her this tape and kind of packaged it up and like. I gave it to her and she was like, oh shit. And she listened to it and it's kind of like dedicated to her in a sense. But that type right. of vibe is like, that doesn't happen anymore. I can't give her a CD anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a gift back then. Shit. Like, yeah, man. That was that crazy. Changed. Damn. Yeah. That's a, that, I, I miss that so much. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, man. I miss that so much. And I even like, it, the thing with music and good music, it used to be more of a resource and actual valuable asset where it was like, there, there was only so much good music from pop artists or, or artists that were known, yeah. so that music was valuable. And now, with Apple Music and the streaming services, you can get a lot of new and upcoming acts, which mm-hmm. is great because a lot of new guys can get on quicker yeah. and, and whatnot. But it's like, for instance, w- w- when I was just when I used to be hustling those CDs or whatever, as like a twelve-year-old kid. I remember found I found back in the day I found Drake City is Mine, which is like an old old. I don't know if you, you know it, but it like, like Jay Z. No, no, no. Drake City is Mine. Oh shit! It's different, yeah. different. It's yeah, a different no, version. not um, not Heart of the City. Oh, Heart of the City. Okay. Uh, but um, Drake City is Mine. It's like the city is mine. Uh, T O R N T O G D R A K E. That's me. Da 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 da. Anyways, it was like he was like on his bars, bars, bars. Shit back in the day. Yeah. And uh, and I found it. That was the first Drake I ever heard. And it was like before his comeback season. It was like mm. mixtape, mixtape shit. Yeah. And I took that and I burned it. I was like, yo, 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 track eight, track eight. <laughs> yo, yo, hit bang, 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 yeah. track eight. <laughs> did, you, did you used to like mark, like yes. just like label the tracks, like boom, Drake, boom, boom, boom like titles and stuff? What, nah. <laughs> I would get lazy because I used to do so many of them. So I used to be like blah, 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 volume one. And I would go Drake, tracks, uh, uh, five through yeah, eight. Yeah, okay. And I'd you. be like, yeah, uh, 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 Aaliyah, da 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 da. And that, cause I, yeah, I was lazy as fuck, anyways. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so back in the day, but it was like, yo, you, you have that new up and coming fire song that, like, I don't even know who this artist is. It was like gold. It was yeah. like, 
holy shit who's this guy could this guy be the next 50 yeah could this guy be the next wayne or you whatever? don't know how he looks like yeah. he's just like you're, you're like oh this dope. voice is like mysterious yeah. i never heard this sound he's from toronto oh my god yeah. and i remember like yo swear to god this guy is next he's definitely next yeah most definitely and uh but now it's like for instance i'll use the example of russ mm-hmm. where it's like i've like again i i'm on soundcloud and I'm, I'm searching all the time right i love music and but you could see Russ coming up on all the playlists and stuff. Or when the rise of J. Cole, it was just yeah. like it was it was kind of spoon fed to you a little bit. You didn't yeah. have to work as much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, to, to to actually get the music, you mean? Yeah, to get to to under to find the artist and yeah, to get the sure. new music. It was like, yeah. oh no, it's just kinda coming now. Yeah. Do you think uh <clears throat> do you think it's it's easier or harder for artists to like get on right now? Like for them to be successful. I think it's I th- well it's easier than like what compared to what 2000 compared to like yeah compared to like that era when like maybe 2005 or something man i i definitely say it's easier because ease of access is one thing and then you know a, a, a lot of these kids know this social media game a l- really, really yeah well, they mastered it but really do you think, well do you think the oversaturation of artists kind of hurts them yeah so one thing i will say is i think that once you when you're good you're good yeah so if you're <clears> good enough it, you're gonna cut through the noise. I think, regardless, you're gonna find a way. It, may, it might not be now, it might be in two years, three years, but if you stick at it and you are truly that artist, yeah, like you're gonna cut through the noise. There was noise like when when Cole was coming up with his uh with his uh what was it the mixtape yeah the mix uh, what were they called um, shit the fuck there was based like, on like uh, there was like Sunday Night Lights or something or something no nah, like there that. was Friday Night Lights was like uh, no there was one before no before that. Before too. that. The warm up or something? Yeah, the warm up. No, it was, yeah. no, it was the warm up. It was, it was the warm up. Yeah. yeah, it was the warm up. Like, there was a lot of noise even there with mixed. Like, again, 50 birth the mixtape era. Yeah. There was a lot of mixtapes coming up. Shit, he, yeah. he changed the game. 50 was my guy. So 50 50's still my 50's guy. 50 yeah. still my guy. Yeah. Still my guy, right? Yeah. But I, I think to answer your question, I think that if you're really, really, truly good, it's going to cut through the noise. Same thing, I think, with there's a million streetwear brands right now. Yeah. There's a million podcasts. There's a yeah, million DJs. True. Yeah. There's a million a anything. If you're really, truly good it might not be this year it might be next year it might be the year after that but i think you're gonna, if you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna cut through the noise versus if you were really truly a good act that same act in 2001 mm-hmm. it's a good chance you're never gonna see the light man that's true now uh, what do you think I, I'm, I, I don't know man i feel like i kind of i'm kind of on the same page when it comes to uh you know your talent's gonna over you know it's gonna cut through the noise yeah, she gonna you know if you if you're good at what you do, you're gonna you're gonna stand out, right? But at the same time, it's like there's so many good guys, dope artists that I know. It's like they just don't. What direction are, are they gonna take? Mm-hmm. They don't have a sense of direction. They don't have like a machine behind them to kind of tell them, you know, help them. That's a good point, right? So, because the industry is so oversaturated, like these kids, everybody's got in- Instagram now. Everybody's got SoundCloud now. Everybody got that. So. We're all utilizing the same platforms the same way. Mm. It's just a matter of like somebody telling you about, hey, this artist is dope. Listen up. And then you hear it plenty of times from like, you know, hey, your other buddy tells you, hey, that artist is dope. Like the same artist that I mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more you hear it, then you're going to be like, you know, I'm going to give it a listen. And then from there, you might tell another friend. So it takes a little longer, I I feel like, for artists to like get on. That's a good point. But it's like, I feel like back then, it's... uh, you know, once 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 you kind of like get into the building, they have like a machine yeah, to help the you out. Yeah, the machine is there, and they yeah. don't have all these kids on SoundCloud. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So kind of over- like me nowadays, even searching for music on SoundCloud is tough because I don't know what the fuck is. There's so much going on. Mm-hmm. Like, how do I pick and choose? I just have to like go through everything know, and be yeah. like, okay, this shit stands out. It's dope. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna listen to it or go to like familiar like remixes of an artist that I already know. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, that's a, that's a really good point because I also feel, to your point, piggybacking off of that was, even if, even if now I feel like back in the day, mm-hmm. in the two thousands era, the it had more good music and good artists had more social currency. And what I mean by that is like, if I knew that was something to talk about, talk about yeah, like if I knew. Like, oh, 
you hear this new Ja Rule guy or something like that? I was like, who, what, 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 yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. shit. I haven't yeah. heard it. Well, tell me, please. Yeah, like, exactly. Versus now it's like, you know, there's a million up and coming acts. Like I could tell you about a trillion guys. You trillion, know? So yeah, it's you like, t- like the next little whatever, whatever, you know, like, yo, the homie <laughs> yeah. from, you, this, this is a lot. And, mm-hmm. and I'm saying that because as a DJ, he kind of, you know, you kind of have to keep up with the trends. Yeah. Right? How do you cut through the noise? she just followed the trends like you just like like i said like social media really helps and like i mean you still have to have your you, you know follow your instincts right like you know fucking listen to like go through the blogs and go through your dj pools and listen to what stands out what do you yeah. think's gonna pop off you gotta study other djs you gotta really see what's popping on the billboards like you just everywhere you just kind of do yeah you, you got to do your research how much, your, how much your time do you dedicate to that uh um, you could spend man, all I could day spend all day. day doing it i spent all like literally i spent most of my days um listening to music Crazy. i'm not gonna lie to the point where it's kind of kind of I, I sometimes need to take a break like Silence. it's too much yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i need to fucking go meditate exactly because mm-hmm. it's like with some of, with some of the mixtapes I put together, so like I try not to have the typical um, average song that's playing all over the place. Mm-hmm, right? I try to mm-hmm. kind of cut through that noise and like switch it up a little bit because I know I'm gonna be playing that that weekend. So it's like I don't want to fucking keep playing the same, same shit all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then you lose your value as a DJ or whatever. How, so hold up, where do you get? See, this is a question. So remember back, you, we used to like you would get mainstream media platforms that would like hit you with you know whatever oh, you yeah, would yeah. know like right? labels yeah and, you would know yeah. when something major dropped because it was coming from a major distribution you hear it on a radio or whatever yeah where this is a question i have where the hell do you get a constant <laughs> stream of what's dropping and when because now like i might just see it on social media or yeah. something like i don't actually know where i even hear new music anymore like how do i how, I mean, how do you get it there's there's a lot of dj pools out there so, okay, it's so like, what's a, what's a DJ pool? A DJ pool is pretty much like a like a website where I, I'm assuming it's the same type of system you mentioned, where um, like labels and 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 everything else send music to like a company that runs a DJ pool and they post that on their websites oh, okay. for DJs to uh, download. But oh. you have to pay a certain fee for it. It's not just free for anybody. Oh, no way. Yeah, you have to be either a DJ or you have to pay like thirty bucks a month or something. Damn. So it's it's not a free thing, right? Damn. Like yeah. So that's crazy. Um, yeah, huh. and then plus that plus you get it. You want to do your own research too and listen to like new albums that that drop, and you want to maybe there's a certain tracks and certain albums that you're like, okay, this is that's the joint right yeah, there. So yeah, let me yeah. get that album that I, that I didn't find in that DJ pool, pool that yeah. that's that everybody has access to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, no, I miss the scarcity of it, man. It's like. I just miss, I feel like, I also feel like in a way, because it's pop now. Yeah, yeah. Like, man, you've been with this shit so long. It's like. Hip hop is a new pop. And I feel like people, some people understand that hip hop is a new top 40, but some people uh, uh, still gravitate towards that corny bubblegum like <laughs> bullshit weird radio <laughs> hit yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't know. It, that works for some people, but it works. I don't know. I, I, to this day. I don't understand why we don't have a hip hop station in Vancouver. Like, we don't have a, a radio hip- station. What? We don't have a hip hop radio station in the city. We don't have. N- n- I don't even listen to radio, so you gotta excuse me. But like, but that's the thing. It's like we don't listen to radio. You don't listen to radio because if you don't have, I mean, I don't listen to radio either. But if I had, um, if we had a station in the city, for example, that'd be you, dope. You would listen. Yeah, you would I listen. listen. Like, I mean, it would have been dope if, like, you know, say uh, an artist come in town and. You know, they could do a little promo run in Vancouver. So they, they could like, go on the yeah, radio yeah. like like they do in, in New York. Like, like Breakfast doing, Club or exactly, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, back then, it's like I used to listen to like Jay Swing and Flip Out show uh, on Friday oh, nights. Flip Out's still doing his thing too. He's, oh, he's at, at, he's at dumb, um, uh, uh, Virgin. Yeah, yeah. Right? He's still there, yeah. But I mean like back, but back that's when that's it a, first started. Right. It used to be called the Beat ninety four point five, and like oh, yeah. these guys, Jay Swing and and Flip Out, they used to have this radio show that I fucked with heavy. It was it was called Straight Goods, mm. and after a certain time, they used to play hip hop music and like have like like uh, fucking get when when there's like a show in town, for example, Fat Joe's in town, <laughs> he yeah. goes to the station and does an interview. When there's like you know gang stars in town, tight. They do an interview. That you does know, not like, exist anymore. Yeah, yo, we're going to be here tonight. Make sure you pull up. Boom, boom, boom. And it's like that. I mean, it doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. Like, yeah, you're totally right. That's gone. If we had a radio station, you cruising down. It's like, yo, 
uh, Snoop's in town. He's going to be there tonight. Yo, let's go check it out. Man. Although it's on social media, but it will still, it was still be cool to hear. It's like really different. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, when an artist comes to town, they just they show just, up at Rogers. They just, they yeah, just they're just there. Up. That's I mean, weird. they're big. It's big artists now, right? Obviously, but, but like, but still, still be cool to have like you know whoever performs at the Vogue Theater go to uh, like Russ, for example. He could go to like the radio station, and be like, "Yo, make sure we got fifteen tickets left. Make yeah, sure you yeah. pick them up. I'm giving away five. Like yeah. whatever it takes. It it just brings a different type of energy. It would have brought a different type of energy to the city because it's hip hop kids. It's a hip hop generation now." Yeah, that's a good point too. Right, like I mean, I used to get hated on all the time for listening to hip hop. Yeah, but like all I mean, it's a hip hop generation. We we need a basketball team too. That's like, a huge, I, yeah. Like that's always in my mind. That's always been hand in like, hand. It's what like, are we doing? Yeah, like, like come, come on, on now. The market yeah. is here. The market yeah. is here. Yeah. Uh, did you? Oh man, there's a new documentary, Finding Big Country. I don't know if you I still heard. Gotta that. watch that. Man. Uh, I think yeah. it's, have you seen it? I've seen parts of it. I have not seen it. I've seen. I was. I know a couple people that showed me a little bit, but okay. I have not seen the whole of it, and I missed it when it was in town. But uh, Kat, uh, who put it together, mm -hmm. uh, directed. Man, she did a phenomenal job. It just, it just like it opens up like a wound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're like, oh damn, we really fucked that up. Yeah, man. yeah, we fucked that up. And like, how exciting was was Vancouver when the, the NBA teams were? Bro, here? that was like it was a as a weekend. kid. That's like that was like one of my best memories ever. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like that's like oh, and plus looking, especially with the style it is now. Looking back at like the style we had, right? And like the throw, like dipped uh, again is going hard on the retro on stuff the retro right stuff. now. Like it's yeah, oh, it's so fire. And like that weekend when they had a the the, the preseason game. In oh town. yeah, see like the city was buzzing. Like everything was. Like, they had a few parties around the city. Yeah, um, like, stop by a couple stores. Yeah, the training dipped, camp. had a pop up training. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They did that. So it's like. If I don't know who could actually help us there's out, some, but yo, there's some, yeah, we, yeah, I know yeah. there's some millionaires out there. Just invest and bring a team to the city, man. The market is there. The like, market is there. Like we can pay for tickets. We'll go to the games. We'll do, and it's gonna. I feel like that would really help with the, with with the nightlife in the city. Oh, it like, help everything. Everything. And it's, it would bring it's good for the economy. It would bring like we yeah like again. I don't know if would you say Vancouver can be a little clicky. Uh, that's that's the that's. That's what Vancouver is known as. Exactly, right? It can right? be a little clicky, but at the same time, you just have to break that cycle, man. I agree. Yeah, so what would an NBA team do? That break, we, it breaks exactly, the cycle. Exactly. Exactly, right? And, and maybe that's our fault a little bit too because, you know, we can't, like, I'm not a football guy, yeah. but, like, fuck, man, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll mess with it. Like, mm -hmm. sure, like, anything we can rally together collectively is that's it. is is amazing. But, um, yeah, just to... To go back that that the first off the whole dip thing with Van City and, and the way they did that like oh, I, I, when he was up. on the podcast man I was like well done like yeah, well played my man That's like sick. that was that was the most like I don't buy I don't even buy anything I went out and bought some of that so that was amazing yeah, for sure yeah. I you you worked a dip you yeah I used to work at that when was when this I was, I was like that was like I was like twenty one twenty two twenty that was like Damn. years ago yeah Damn. yeah yeah. yeah. Um, I used to, I used to work at, that was a good time, man. So you, are you a sneakerhead? Uh, you can, I'm not really like, I have a lot of sneakers, but I'm not like, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, a, yeah, pause, yeah, yeah. pause, that's a little suspect right yeah, there. Yeah. I have so you a sneakerhead? I know I have like a room dedicated yeah, no, to sneakers, I got, I got, <laughs> but I'm not a sneaker. I'm not a sneakerhead. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know, like, I just like what I like, you know what I'm trying to I say? Like, you. I'm not really like yeah, yeah, the yeah, type yeah. of dude that knows exactly this is the so-and-so's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just... This is hot. I'm getting... Yeah, they're dope, and, and, I, want, I, and I want them. But yeah, um, we just working at this was, was an amazing experience. It was dope. Um, working with Martinis, like mm. a, a Don in the city, you know he what I mean? Dawn, He's like that man. guy. And, you know, I got to meet so many people, like DJ Seco, like yeah. Sailor Jerry, like, so, like the staff was amazing. Everybody that's worked at Dipped, He's doing some amazing shit right now. That's what I keep hearing, man. Yeah, that's it's what like, I keep, keep it's, hearing. They, they're all doing well, some like dope DJs shit. It's like DJs or skateboarders yeah. or entrepreneurs yeah, or like, like hip-hop artists. Yeah, like actors. Actors. Like, actors. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's kind of like, I don't know what it is about that spot, but it's it's a cool spot that, that that's a um, huge staple for the city, man. Yeah, no, for sure. And I'm kind of glad I got to, you know, be part of that little um run that i had 
It was sick. Yeah, man, it's very, very cool. I, I love the style, and and I was, I, this is corny, but it's true, man. I was like honored to sit across the table from him, and like really, like he gave, you know, he, he blessed us with, you know, like two, three hours, and we had yeah. a great conversation. And he he's a humble dude for sure, and just was kind of like, yeah, you know, like we did this, and we did, and you know, Master P came through, and yeah, da, 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 and, dude, you know, like you know, I was tight with this person, or you know, we decked this person out, or young guru this, young guru that, or like, yeah. and I was just like. He's dropping these names that are like it's icons. Light. It's light, yeah. And he's like, yeah, he came through, bought this, wore it there, shot out here. And I was like, are you joking right now? Dude, you, know? you, should, you should see his fucking picture. Like, he has photos. I remember, like, I was in the back room, uh, like, you know, fixing some shoes or some shit. Yeah. And then, like, I think I came across, like, a box full of, like, photos. Oh, no way. All the people that he took photos, like, that, that, that's that been through Dipped. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, he man. told me he still got the receipt. He said he got this. He has the receipt of the first customer ever, which was Master P. Yes, when yeah. he came off the sidewalk or whatever. And uh, yeah, yeah. If you want to hear that story, go listen to that podcast, which will be out. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like, yeah, no, I, I think he said he framed the receipt. I don't want to misquote him, but he's like, oh yeah, trust me, I have all that stuff. Yeah, dude, he's got. He's got. This guy's met a lot of people. This man. guy's crazy, and he's like so low key. And I, I want part of this podcast is like just trying to get that. Like, I want to get those stories and that information out there, man, because mm-hmm. that's part of you want to talk about growing culture and getting a platform for people. That's, that's right. part. Of, that's part of what this is. Is like let's let's dig up this stuff, dig up this culture that it exists. It is. It has happened. It's, it is it's real. Here. It's real. Like man. you just you need to like like hear it. Let's put it over these these social platforms or whatever. So that's yeah. I didn't even know you were to. Dip, man. That yeah, yeah, I worked at the, yeah, that's yeah, so I worked cool, at Dip. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. It was super dope, man. Like it's such a cool experience. And like I used to shop at Dip. I used to be like, God damn, this place is so so cool. fire. Yeah. Yes. Like, and like I ended up working there, and it was like the dopest shit. Yeah, and like yeah, yeah. the experience there was like, like there's so many cool things that happen. Like the parties that he, he used to throw was super cool. Like the people that I get I got to meet, the yeah. people, like artists coming in town and coming at Dip, and we got to meet them and take pictures with them. DJs I dipped like he actually um Martini used to have like a set of turntables and there was like a bunch of us coming up uh like when I was first coming up the DJing and like he just allowed us to like get on the tables do Tight. sets and shit like it, it was a good experience Tight. like it was one of those stories that's like uh a big staple to the city and like big up to them for being like still booming after like what over 20, 20 years, years or something yeah yeah exactly that's yeah. like that's 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 the, that's some shit 20 years of that 20 years of vanity originals and 20 years of dip but like before that was um fuck what, fuck you, what heard. you heard yeah, yeah. that's so hard yeah yeah, yeah. That's so hard when he first told me i was like yeah no i had this brand before that was called fuck what you heard i was like yo you had a brand called fuck what you heard <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's so fire yeah, yeah like that's just amazing and like uh it's, it's it's iconic in my mind and maybe i'm just a fanboy but you know like honestly it is and i'm a uh, fan too like that's, that's real big real homie. real shit so i mean like that's that's even part of what you know made me gravitate towards the self-hire crew because yeah. i remember going in there and be like oh shit self-hire shit's in here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh shit i know that, you that's know. like that's a huge thing like when you when 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 like yo your shit is that dipped How'd you get it at that? Yeah, like, 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 yeah. like, I, like that's, <laughs> yeah. like, that's, that's like, like, yo, dude, you, like, you, you're, that's big you, talk yeah, that's right big there. talk. It's yeah. like, yeah, you're not just nobody. Like, no, man, that's like, that, that was crazy. Yeah. And like, to see, so we got him on a podcast and he was like talking about how uh, Young Guru like came through and showed love and all that stuff. And he's like, yeah. And then that was right when uh, Barclays Center was opening up and they did, they did a documentary on the opening of Barclays and Jay-Z and Young Guru and all that. And he, they had like an interview with him sit, like standing in the middle of the court. Just, you know, they had the, the segue with him just like repping his van, van city. city. And I was like, Hard. he said it. Yeah. He said it. And I was like. I was like, oh, that's like cool. Like probably somewhere deep in archives. I just like Googled it and it's like right there, right there like yeah. however many million views. And it's like, that's crazy to crazy, me. Crazy, crazy. You know, like I think I saw that video too. I was like, God damn. That's like, wild. Like, and that's yeah. like low key. Like that's like low key. Like thanks to like Martini and the connect that he has with, with uh young guru. It's like, that rep, that's us. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, that's, that's Vancouver. Yeah. Like, we're out there. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, the, like that's, 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 that's really this us. Is, this is really us. Yeah. Like, this is like, yo, Van City, we in this motherfucker. Yeah, Dog like, it's here. That represents it's here. everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's huge, man. Big up to like the Van City brand, man. Yeah, for sure. yeah. So did you, did you have to, so what was that interview like? Was it like, all right, 
all right uh, uh what's this shoe boom do you uh, know this shoe do you know this shoe it's it's really like you know i think it was based is mostly based on relationships right, right like right, back right, then right, it was right. like you know i knew you know i was shopping there very often and then um i knew some of the people that worked there and i got introduced to martini and then you know we kind of gelled from there and, mm-hmm. and then i got and i got the, it wasn't just like a bring your resume in and i need yeah, i need you sure, know what i mean yeah. like for at least based on like when i started to work there it wasn't just like you know people used to come in for with resumes and it was hard to get a job there because you kind of have to know some people and shit like they yeah. gotta know what type of kid you are mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. um so it wasn't based on like uh resume, me giving my resume you know, it was just based yeah. on like relationships yeah, and it just yeah. started I'm like sh- that i'm sure he gets a shit ton of resumes now man god damn. that's a fact that's but he has, he has a, he has a solid team right now too that's what he said too he said that he's like really really happy with the people that he's got under him he's really like bringing up a lot of a lot of Young talent kids, in, different, yeah, yeah. in different areas and that's like i these guys that stick their neck out like really truly pioneers where they may have laid the groundwork you know for 10 15 years of like just trying to cultivate talent and just you know giving people a shot oh you dj yeah hop on here Hop yeah, on yeah. here, like live yeah. the sea, like or like like floetic with open with uh, emotions open mic. That's right. You know, like that was, you know, just creating those environments just to get on, and then you know, that, like these people might probably will never get recognition. Yeah, even like, just to elaborate on that again, like it's 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 um you know he used to have at dip when I used to work there there was like uh like a corner where there was a barber. No way. Yeah, yeah. So and then That's one so one of my big homies like Junior the barber. He uh he he started working. Hold there. up, is that connecting to to juniors? Like the barbershop now? No? Junior, yeah, yeah. So Junior started cutting hair at fucking dip. No. And, way. Then, and then, you know, a few years after he owns like three shops. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. He walked in there. I was working with like one of my homegirls, uh like one of my coworkers, Raven. Okay. And he walked in, he's like, Yo, is uh is the owner here? That's the junior I'm talking about. And then uh and then we're like, oh, no, he's not here. But like, well, what's up? He's like, yeah, just tell him that Junior came through. Like, I want to see what's up with like that corner. I'm trying to cut hair. I'm new in the city. He was like straight from like Toronto or like New York or something. Crazy. And then um, a few months after, came in, started cutting hair. Two, three years after, this nigga owns like three ah, shops. You know shit. what I mean? And it's like just a growth and like us witnessing, you know, Martini giving him a chance to like cut hair in the city. He's building his clientele, and then from there, boom, he opens like three shops. And then you know, what I mean, I'm doing my own thing, Still like growing, you know. Yeah. And it's like everybody's kind of like just flourishing off, um, just being connected like that. Damn! Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. I can sit down and have a two hour conversation with him, and like that just like slips his mind. Like, yeah, that, that's like when like you have that thing. level of boss shit that's just happened that like super cool shit, like yeah. you know, like. It, yeah, you know. Yeah, you, forget, you got you just so forget. much going on. You, you just like, like, oh, oh yeah, that too. Yeah, you know, like, like, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, when you have so much going on in your plate, that old dope shit, it's like, like you said, but like, you kind of forget, like, uh, yeah, not because uh, it's to undermine it or anything like that, but just to be like, man, it's just a lot going on, a lot that we've done, and um, yeah. By the way, that popped off, and now we've got three shops, and now he's got an enterprise, and now he's got a that franchise doing did, this, that, and the other. Exactly. And it's like, oh yeah, by the way, he was the first. This was the first spot that he came in. He, he would say in. all the time, like. Like uh, you know, guys like yourself, like oh yeah, like the that was the first time he really actually you know learned how to, learned how to scratch, and, and now mm-hmm. he's like you know the DJ in the city. He's like oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> Shit. yeah 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 you know what I'm saying like <laughs> I was there like kind of just yeah learning and shit and like you know I, I played some of the parties that I, I, I dipped like for the anniversary parties oh. and I had the chance to do that and it's like I think I still have photos like on Facebook or some shit but I have to like reactivate my account and yeah, shit. yeah yeah but, yeah but uh. Yeah. Yeah, it's just there's a lot of history, man. So like, let's freeze frame here. So let's just think about this. Let's go in deep here. So let's think. If you take a picture of that spot in whatever year where you had, you know, Junior in a corner, yeah, whoever on the turntables, yeah, or whatever it may be. If you were to freeze frame that, yeah, take that moment in time, yeah. If you were to put a modern twist on it, who would those people be now? In your mind, who are you seeing? Who's the kid in the corner that's cutting hair? Who's the kid on the turntable? Who's the kid skateboarding out there? Who's the guy that's that's you know writing up the business plan in the back? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like ba- based on like who they have now. 
not even like not even necessarily on who dipped has now but who you see in the city is like you know what i don't know if he's got it yet but, but he might he it? might get it that's a good question my dude um like i know i'm putting you on the spot like crazy right now but i know that these people exist and i know they're slept yeah, on right yeah absolutely um in terms of like it could be anything it could be whether it's athletes could be whether it's artists whether it's like DJs. who's next yeah who do you think who's got next in the city damn son so it's, you know those those kids that dipped man they got, they got like it. I'm not gonna lie it's something okay. about dip man like those 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 young boys that I've met like they you know what I mean they just have a certain type of like energy about and, like, them yeah there's something about like the the way they move and it's, it's kind of dope but I mean I don't really, I'm not really out there for me to really figure out okay, right. how they move and shit but all it's right. like those boys are like they got something special going on with them but in terms of like who's coming up i don't know man that's a tough one my g yeah it's all good yeah it's all good we may have we may we may have to go come, come back, back to that, that one we'll have, we'll have to think about we'll that we'll have you back on another time don't yeah. worry about you i want to get at yeah you know, actually i want to get you and uh, i want to get you and floetic going back and forth a little bit and stuff i want to get yeah. you guys like i want to get i want floetic to say some wild shit and you be like oh hold up hold yeah. up hold up hold up you know what i'm saying that'd be cool because i don't think we've done um like a podcast together okay, and there's yeah, a lot there's a lot of like we've done a lot man yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. that should be interesting no that'd be tight for sure but yeah I know, I know there's a lot of people coming up man i'm looking at honestly that podcast we did with with jamie yeah opened my eyes to like a lot jamie, of jamie, stuff jamie's dope. He, he, yeah, yeah. he showed me a lot of a lot of artists and yo check this guy out check this guy out check this guy out and uh he like engineers for like the whole city right but he like literally everybody yeah. goes through his his studio and he's really confident that like like we're close you know yeah, like yeah. we're close i mean that's the type of man that actually he that's a perfect guy to ask like yeah, who's yeah, next yeah. you know what i mean because it's like he really listens he, he hears the whole sound he hears the whole city like everybody goes through him and it's like and he he, he he's there like yeah. I hear it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this person's popping. This person's popping. I know his style. I know her style. Like, yeah. he engineers everybody in the city. That's dope. You know I that you. I that I know of. You know what I mean? I got but you, I got you. I got you. I mean, yeah, you got to curate, right? You got to curate. I mean, that's so much of your job. Yeah. How do you with these made art shows? Yeah. How do you really? I mean, you got to go and select these pieces and these artists, and you got to put this shit together in a certain type of way to order it to make the the actual spectacle Aesthetic. that you have created. Yeah. Um, how, how, what is that process like? It's, it's pretty simple man um it's it's you know there's not really like a picking and choosing aspect of it right. it's really like having a conversation with the artists that want to be involved right and then um I, I just need them to understand like the direction of it right like holistically as an event yeah okay especially that you know i want to tell them hey this is what we've done and this is what we're trying to do and you know I'm a huge fan of you guys because I can't even do any anything close to what you guys yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just here to actually like this is a this is a celebration for your work. You know what I mean? Like you, oh. you spend so much time doing it and you know, I wanna spend my time trying to create an event for you guys to celebrate your work. Mm -hmm. So it's like you know, say for the Queens of the Culture, like we had Adam doing a piece and then <clears throat> when it comes to that aspect of things like I kind of think some artists are dope, but I let them make the decision as to who who uh, you know would fit best for certain Whatever. shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. But for the next one that we're doing, you know, this might be like a spoiler alert. I'm not sure, but okay, we're we're, we're gonna focus on photography. Okay, and just one of wisdom. That's the one of wisdom okay. that we we're, we're kind of working in the works on, right now. Done, yeah. Um, well, that's a guy that I'm a big fan of. You know, what mm -hmm. I mean, like he has amazing, he has an amazing eye. He shot some amazing people in the city. So, you know, it will be cool to have, like, a gallery of, like, people that he shot because yeah. there's so much work on social media. It's cool to look at it online, but imagine seeing that in the gallery. Way different. It's imagine way seeing different. that shit live and having the DJ popping and having a drink in your hand and meeting somebody new and looking around the room. It's like, yo, this is a vibe. Mm. That's why we mm. do, like, these made events. So, But when it comes to, like, picking and choosing how to do that, I always leave it to the artist because it's their work. Mm. So you, really, you kind of do you take a back seat creative. I take a back kinda, seat, yeah. yeah, and it's kind of like okay, cool. I mean, I give my opinion, of course, my opinion, of course, of course input, but yeah. it's like, you know, you know, I, I show you the venue, I give you the direction, and lay it out how you want to lay it. Throw them out you, basically. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like that's all yours because that's your work. Present it how you want to be presented, gotcha. and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
Made. Where you get that Maid. name from? Because that's pretty fire. <laughs> yeah, Made is just you know it's 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 actually funny enough. Like you know a while ago, uh, one of my friends DJ Seiko actually okay. like came up with the name, and then it really because you know one of my first Made events I collaborated with them. It was like him, uh, myself, DJ Seiko, DJ Marvel, and uh, Sailor Jerry. Mm which are DJs in the city. And then we kind of, you know, I had this idea of like just doing an art show party and then I reached out to them to help me out. That happened. And then Adam was actually one of the first artists that- oh, okay, that was featured? That was featured that cool. I actually met through a mutual friend of mine. And then from there, Adam and I kind of kept that going because, you know, the other boys had other things going on. So, yeah, yeah. But that was like my passion project. So I'm like, I'm going to keep it going with Adam as somebody that's as passionate as I am. And he's like, you know, we can just showcase your work until we kind of we kind of build a reputation for uh, what we do. And then, yeah, that's how it happened. And then, but the, made, the, the name Made came from my boy Seiko. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much like it's made by us right. for you guys. Like it's just made, made, made from Vancouver. Tight. For Vancouver. For Vancouver. By Vancouver. Tight. You That's know what I mean? Tight. So yeah. you guys have done the Lululemon Lab in Gastown, is that right? Yeah. So we've done different venues. We've done, yeah, the Lululemon Lab in Gastown. We've done uh, a dispensary. Uh, what's the name of that dispensary? Damn it. Uh, it's on Hastings. Which Might need to cut that out. And okay. Yeah. Mind, they added that. <laughs> so the Lululemon Lab. Yeah. We've done the Lululemon Lab. We've done um, Grail, the sneaker shop. Yeah. We've done uh, the New Balance on Robson Street. Oh, word. Yeah. Uh, and we've done a couple of like our own venues that we rented, like warehouses that we rented. Right. Um, and then, um, and like one of my homies' dispensaries. Cool, cool, cool. Just cool, like cool. pop ups around the city. And I think we've done a couple other spots, but I'll so let you know. So, how many shows have there been? Man, I thought there only been like maybe two, three, four, maybe. It no, like we been try a to bunch. make, we, yeah, we, we've, we've done quite a few. Damn. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we try to make them like, you know, four or five times a year, like every season. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And so this one coming up with Wisdom, photography-based, Photog that's a really good venue to have it at. Super dope. Yeah. Because you've seen, you seen the fo their, their photos in the venue, They've right? They've done it so well, man. Clean. They And uh, they actually just, I was saying it today. I got my, I got to cut there today. Uh -huh. But um, uh, they have these new like plants coming down from the walls and shit, the aesthetic. And then, and then, you know, uh, they got their shit coming up now and it's like, I don't know. It's just grown in such a it's clean cool dude. way. I don't know. I can't really like put a finger on it. It's not like a, it is like a barber shop, but it's, but it's not, not like a barber shop. Yeah. Like I said, when I, when I think wisdom, when, when I think wisdom club, it's like barbering is not the top of mind. I think yeah. of like the creative direction and yeah. And yeah. So yeah. Ho yeah. Hopefully we have, I'd love, love to actually have those guys on and, and sometime soon. So yeah, yeah they're there. And also, like you said, and like we mentioned before earlier, with the follower count, yeah, those guys aren't even close to where they they're they, gonna they be. They should be. Or they or should like, be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, th like those guys are one thousand percent slept on in my in my opinion. Yeah, they're like they're where their quality of work is compared to what their audience is. Yeah, that place should be packed all twenty four seven, three sixty five. Right. Like, yeah. they, like they 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 give great cuts too, and the experience is amazing. The barbers are great. Mm -hmm. Like the whole from walking in to walking out and i don't mean to dick ride too much but like you know what i'm but saying yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's, it's a dope thing like it it's, should it's be another staple for vancouver it's another staple in the city you know what i mean it, it's it, like they it have should. a lifestyle going on there. it should be yeah it should be right like I, I as much as lulu is cool and all that stuff like we that stuff should be top of mind yeah, yeah. like uh the same like you think of dipped right now and that's great like that's a good start for yeah. sure we should be thinking of wisdom when we think of vancouver yeah, like, yeah for like, sure we should be thinking of the grizzlies but you know obviously yeah, that's but not i happen, know what right? you mean yeah, right yeah. like or even um uh even like how cool would it be if a, a a local vancouver dispensary came to the forefront of you know what if thc came to the forefront of you know legalized cannabis and healing mm -hmm. like what if that like on a national and international scale why is that not happening right like these are these are things that again i'm not from here so for me to come in for as a foreigner and again you can actually attest to this as well if you yeah. can come in and see I mean, even when you came here as a youngin yeah it's like oh wow th this this is this is amazing yeah like this is like the city the landscape everything like why is this not not i mean it's definitely at, i feel like it's at the point where you know it's getting more uh it's getting acknowledged a lot more mm -hmm. and there's a lot of cool things developing like you said like uh Marvin and his brothers and stuff like they opened up a wicked shop you know what I mean and it's like myself like I'm trying to do some art shows Very, and like yeah. build a culture around the city so it's like uh, there's like 
different aspects of the city that are you know self-hired boys you know yeah, yeah, like yeah. floetic with emotions like we, we're out there really trying to put on for the city and like create a culture in the city and it's happening now you know what i'm saying like, it's been the culture's been popping but it's like now it's like okay cool uh you know like i said before like we're responsible for that like that's right. that's, that's what we do yeah. that's why we do what we do because we cool. gotta really showcase people hey man when you come to vancouver this is what you're supposed to expect like yo it's a vibe, man. It like, it, see, how dope would it be? See, I'm just fantasizing now, but like, you know, say Boss comes to town. Uh huh. You know, I want his manager to be like, hey, listen, I know we're going to do the show, but listen, you got to go through depth. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. listen, like, like Maid is, Maid is going to be doing a little pop up, you know, like the night uh, before. We got to hit that. Up. Yeah. You got to hit that, and you got to get a cut of wisdom. That's it. And you got you to come by the podcast and do a little press run. That's it. Right? <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's that simple. But the thing is, I feel like it sounds extremely simple, and I think it's completely doable. Like, no, like I, I think there should be like a to do list of like classic things, like, like when. When you do a press run, when you're going to go play at Madison Square Garden, you go to Hot 97. You go to the Breakfast Club, That's right? It. Like, you know, you go to, you know, like, wherever it is. You Maybe you go to Extra Buttery. Maybe you go to um, Flight Club. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, why yeah, these why, not, yeah. These exist in these every exist, other major market. Exactly. Like, it, like, but the thing is, exactly what you mentioned could be, could, could happen. Yeah. And I thought about the same thing, man. So I see like, the fire in your eyes, yeah, man. You're like, like, because it's like, you know, sometimes... You know, when I see amazing, cool shows in Los Angeles, for example. Yeah. You know, there's always, like, you know, Diplo comes through and does, like, a set or something. Like, surprise pop-up set. Or, like, you know, whoever from, like, Ty Dolla Sign came through <laughs> just to kind of check out the show. Like, yeah. there's some a lot of cool artists in the city or that come to the city that are big time come through and be like yo i'm i'm gonna check out the homie show yeah. and i'm 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 gonna pick up a piece at dip like you said yeah. swing by i'm gonna go eat at this spot yeah and exactly. then, you know what i mean i got my boy oh you guys want to do a little little podcast what yeah. is it about yeah. it's about this okay let's go check it out whatever yeah yeah and then like yo you got some weed no tac got them right there are we yeah, in canada we, oh it's legal here oh, it's legal yeah yeah, yeah. All right, cool we're good yeah we we got the we got the stuff we got the resources that's what we I'm saying, just, yeah. But we just have to, like, orchestrate it. <sighs> yeah. Like, yeah, really, really go out and, like, pioneer, like, guys like yourself, man. But the thing is, is... What do you I, think they're missing pieces? Ego. You think so? From my, <clears throat> my opinion, it's easy... It's easy for me to say that because, you know... I, I'm in a humble place. So, yeah. you know, for if I can, if I was uh, a Seth K or if I was a, a, a snack or a mad child or something like that, you know, like, and I had notoriety, then it, maybe it's harder for me to say ego is the problem. Yeah. But from my perspective, you know, I, I try to act with a lot of humility. And I think that if we just get over ourselves and, and be like, I right, listen, I don't know who so and so is, and yeah. I don't know who they fuck with or what high school they went to or whatever it is, but I, yeah. I can I know that this content that they're doing or whatever their craft is is amazing. Let's yeah. go fuck with them. Yeah. Why why is that not possible? I don't know. You know, like so maybe maybe it's that. I think the other thing too, and maybe something and I'm no I don't I don't know, but one of the things I think that maybe we need to be wary of is that as we get to a point with you know, especially DJs like yourself mm. or artists like yourself where you're at a point again you're you're playing the stadium like mm -hmm. you're playing bc place right yeah we're at points now even with comedians i see this and artists i see this we're at a certain point where we're like okay i've grown as big as possible in vancouver now i have to leave so this this you know what i'm saying this happens in basketball we're experiencing this right now in canada where it's like you're if, not lying man if you're if you're a, a great player in bc you get you're going you're going down south if you're a great player in toronto you're going down south uh -huh. to go develop and get to the true potential yeah so you have so how do we now that we have i see this coming to be maybe a problem in the future is now that we've garnered what truly is good skill, good content, good craftsmanship, we take we, it elsewhere. Yeah, oh, we, oh, how, we just keep it. So how do we self. keep it here? Oh, okay, got you. You know got what I'm saying? You, like, yeah. how do we? How do we? How do we make it so it's viable? The market is viable um, financially and culturally to keep it here. Yeah. Versus just going elsewhere, right? Because like yeah. a guy like yourself, so now you're out here playing a stadium. Now what's, what's next? next? What's next for you? Yeah. What's next? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. honestly, yeah, what it. is next it's for like, you? 
you know, I, I'm at the point where it's like the only thing that's really next is like, you know, like I s- you kind of hit at the, the ceiling. Stadium. Yeah, I'm at the stadium, but it's like, you know, okay, cool. I could, you know, let me let me open up for Jay Z and Beyonce at a stadium. But okay. it's like, you know, that kind of goes. It doesn't go hand to hand, hand, but it's like I've played there before. You know right. what I mean? I've I've done that before. So now it's like, what do you do? I don't have the answer. You know what I mean? It's like you just. I feel like the next thing to do is like you have like a major, major, major artist or photographer wanted to collaborate for a main event that we bring to the city mm. or we need we need to bring stuff to the city like you guys need to we need to make sure like a big artist comes and does his podcast with yeah, you yeah. you need to have a you know when joe rogan's in town doing a comedy show you need to Get talk him to him yeah you know yeah, what i mean yeah, like yeah. or like andrew schultz or something you yeah, know what i mean like man. yeah so, so stuff fine. like that so and and for myself like you know i'm a huge fan of like jonathan mannion i don't know if you I know that he, he's like a He's like a big time photographer. Okay, sure. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of like Swiss Beats. Swiss Beats is like my idol. Like legend. I want to be Swiss legend. Beats. You know what I'm saying? Legend. Like legend. the stuff that he's doing, I actually like his blueprint, like I idolized what he's doing. Steven, that's how I got influenced by doing Made. By these two names. Jonathan Mannion used to do these uh, photography shows and I fell in love with like the whole thing. Because he shot like all these classic albums like... Uh, the DMX albums, the Jay Z albums, like those covers. That's him. That's all him, and he did like uh, a showcase in I think like Los Angeles or New York or something, Crazy. where he's like showcasing all those, fo- all Crazy. that photography. But that's fucking sick, right? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. And then and then uh, like Swiss Beats is doing like a free. He collaborated with Bacardi, and he's doing like putting on some artists mm. and all over the country but i mean he has the resources for it you know i don't have that yeah. type of money he's to ma- do that yeah, yeah. he has millions and he has a big company like bacardi backing him so if i had that type of resource i'd have you know artists from all over the world coming in but that's bringing a lot more attraction to the show because i'm having artists yeah. from new york coming in artists from la coming in but we're keeping it in vancouver it's yeah, based yeah, in vancouver yeah, yeah, yeah. so i feel like that's the only way to really step our game up like do what we do but on a bigger scale so what made you so inspired inspired by swiss beats because i'm i'm a huge swiss beats fan just like Fam. from rough swiss riders beats, and yeah that. from him being like a, the dopest producers being like just his you know put like just having the same vision like he has a vision that i want to have like he, he he's kind of like he's a huge art fan and 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 he understands how to like uses platform and power to actually help other people okay sure so hold up you you you're referencing this and like i mean we're both hip-hop fans we we know the history so for someone that does not know yeah like you know this who swiss beats is and what he's done and how he's shaped a lot of what we hear today yeah how would you describe where he came from and and how would you describe what what your perception of and why you gravitate so much towards that so he's like um swiss beats is a producer from the bronx new york um if you ever heard of dmx the rapper he's like one of his major producers and if you ever heard the rough riders anthem stop drop that's swiss beats so hard yeah uh you know i mean he was like a young 18 year old kid that just became a millionaire when he was like just out of working hard he was like 18 he was like 18, 19 when he was like, his shit was booming. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah, Rough Riders. How old is he now? I don't know. I'd say like maybe mid-40s. I thought he was like 50, man. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. No, I don't know. So, yeah. I mean, Alicia Keys is his wife. Yeah, Alicia Keys. You know I mean, that's, yeah. I would die right there. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's, yeah. Um, nonetheless, from from just doing that, you know, being a, you know, a beat maker from the streets and going through some crazy shit and, and like just transitioning into designing cars and watches and fucking getting into fashion and designing shoes for like Reebok. Well, pause, hold up. He designs cars? Yeah. Like uh like Aston Martins and stuff like that. Like he he's up there. He designs like watches like No way. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't even know that. Okay. Um Yeah, like he, he like designs like shoes for like Bali or like Chanel or some shit. Um like now, and and he curates the show called uh, No Commissions, mm. 
and you know he, he can't draw i don't know if he knows how to draw or whatever but it's like he's pretty much creating a platform for artists to showcase their work with and everything that they sell they keep no way 100%. he's not taking anything he's not taking shit wow and he has like a big company like uh bacardi backing him yeah so he can and afford to do so it he can, he can afford to do it and the thing is my hope my whole approach when it comes to made is the same approach because I'm I'm a fan of what he's doing and I've always been a fan of art, but it's like I feel like a lot of artists, you know, spend their time making the art, but they don't really have the time to like, or even the personality to like be out there and doing a show. So mm -hmm. it's like they need somebody else to help them. And me being in like the industry and like knowing some people in the industry and like somewhat having a personality to like be out there and like invite people to showcase their work that's what i want to do mm -hmm. so he inspired me in that sense where it's like wow if he could do it i could do that possible. too it's possible it's, possible. Possible. Yeah. it's doable and it's like it's inspiring to see that shit and that's it's like cool. i just want to bring that here too i had no idea I didn't, I didn't i had no idea about all that i just knew him as a legendary creative and a legendary producer and, a legendary and his album is fire the latest album oh Hard. my gosh oh i, I didn't that's like the Swiss beats of old. Yeah, yeah. Like, am I wrong? Back, yeah, like, no. yeah, like that's the beats hard. Beats and like just his ad libs. Like that's yeah, he, that's oh, my guy, dude. Man, who do you, uh, Jim Jones on that one track? Jim oh, Jones, my God. Like, uh, the one with Lil Wayne. Yeah, the, oh yeah, yeah. That's well, like the intro. The, even the one with gigs. Yeah, even the one with gigs. Yeah, yeah the whole, the, I haven't heard anything off that I don't like. So dude, yeah, hard. Super, 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 super hard. So yeah, yeah no, that's a. No, nah, DMX, I already spoke about DMX. Yeah. I was missing DMX, you yeah. right? Yeah, that would have been like the icing on the cake, dude. That would have been crazy. I hope, I don't know what's going on with DMX right now, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that he was uh, he was something back in the day. But no, man, I feel you for sure. I don't I don't think that, I mean, I think it's possible. I think it's all possible. I, I, I yeah. don't. But it, again, like you just like you just spoke on, it's hard. So if, say I'm a, uh, say I'm a, um, an artist mm -hmm. and artists are, as you know, obviously, usually very introverted that's right and a lot of the time well what a lot of people will say is that as soon as they step into the business their art fails like yeah. in terms of they can't have the creative outlet and, and productivity in their art if they try to step into the business so to have a person like yourself to kind of handle that yeah you know act in i don't want to say a godfather role or a manager role but it's in something in that sense. capacity yeah right um to kind of head that and, and steer people in the right direction could be huge because then again what this all pillars on is making sure the content itself is pure good of the quality that it mm -hmm. needs to be mm -hmm. of whatever variety it doesn't have to necessarily be this way or that way that's what I'm but saying. just quality in itself right like not lacking passion yeah and then because that's what all of this stems from is is being in a position where when it comes down to the truths of the matter mm -hmm. like no matter how you promote it or what marketing schemes you're using at the end of the day it's got to be dope for it to last and like again, anyone can pop off on Instagram for you know twenty four hours or a week or a That's month it. or whatever it is. You can be there and gone, and that doesn't mean anything. But if you are truly producing quality content and growing as an artist over you know years, decades, whatever it may be, and you have someone that can godfather you in, That's good, man. Could be scary. It could be scary. It could be and scary. Like, you know, especially with like you know, I'm. It's a pat. It's really. I'm extremely passionate about it. You know yeah, what I mean? And I can not, see it, man. I can not, see it glow not, up, man. I'm not doing it for like yeah. no money. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, just, yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's just really, I'm like, to be honest, like I'm spending more than what, I don't make shit actually. Yeah. I don't even charge people when they come to made. Yeah. Right? So it's like, it's really a passion project and it's super dope that people actually support it because, you know, we're doing it for the city, man. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and to showcase the, the amazing talent that we have in Vancouver. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we'll wrap this up, but I got to ask you, what is, obviously you've had success on a level that you're at. Yeah. In your mind, what is, because you're experiencing organic growth, which you should, because again, the content is quality. In your perspective, what do you need to level up? What is the next level for you? How yeah. do you get there? What do you need in terms of made? made yeah. Um, it's just... Um, that's a good question. I just need um, for me to level for us to level up. Just backing financially, About financial corporately. backing. Okay, because it's like you know we you, I could have all these um, goals and ideas in mind, but it's like if I don't have the resources to actually like make it happen, mm -hmm. 
it's nearly impossible. So who would be the ideal partner for you? Let's just say you could wish it and it would come true. Uh, or the ideal type of partner, or the ideal, you know what I'm saying? It'd probably be, um, you know, because the events that I, it'd probably be like, I don't know, like a Bacardi or something or like a mm -hmm. Hennessy or something, like mm -hmm. a company that has, a huge name. Well, I don't really care about the name. It's just, you know, the company that's willing to respect the approach of made. Right. Like how we do our thing. A company that's not that's not gonna compromise or like make us change our ways. Yeah. You're gonna maintain, maintain creative control and Yeah, creative control and just somebody that's that just believes in the project and that's willing to like just, you know, help us out with like resources mm -hmm. or any type of connections that they have mm -hmm. to uh, you know, take it to level, you know, where we at to the next level mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from level one to ten like let's take it there but mm -hmm. you know it's really you know it's nobody uh in particular but i mean like if if i had to narrow it down maybe somebody like hennessy that, yeah. that 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 supports you know i see a lot of shows that did support like remy and hennessy they support like a bunch of like you know the show they have showcase for big artists you know what i mean i'm sure they could kind of you yeah. know they have a budget for this little idea that I have that could potentially be huge. Right, right, you know right, I mean? right, right. So it's like, it's just a matter of them believing um, what we have going on. And uh, we can show you, we can show you what yeah, we have going yeah, yeah. on. You can, you're more than invited to come to what we have going on. Uh, it's just a matter of like, you know, the executive or whoever to be like, yeah, let's, let's yeah. get these boys Push to the try. Yeah, 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 let's, yeah, let's just make it happen and see what they could do. If they can't, if we're not happy with it, we'll just, you know, pull the plug, but yeah. it's not going to change anything for us because we've been doing it. Yeah. It's just only going to help us. Yeah, 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 no, for sure. I think that uh, you have a opportunity and that you've already established a grassroots movement Yeah, that's proven and has, like, again, the content there and, and you've, you've built a community now, right? Especially yeah. through, you know, what we have going on is self-hired and what you've built just in conjunction. And like it's, you said, it's a community, whether it's the people at Grail or whether it's people at Wisdom, you know, there's, like, there's people so, connected here. We all connect. Right, man, so yeah. it's like you've built a grassroots following. What do we need to just take that from there to like, oh, this is a must, must see art show. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like that, yeah. I think there's a, there's a, a spot there. I don't know. I'm trying to think of local companies that, you know, I mean, I guess Lulu would be one. Lou, yeah, and, uh, you know, I mean, and, and they have help, you know, like Lulu for them to even be, to embrace the whole concept and like, hey, here's a venue for you guys. Yeah. You know, for, uh, you know, New Balance to do that, but we need more companies mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to help mm -hmm. us. Like, hey, mm -hmm. man, you know, we really like what you guys are doing. Yeah. Just come to the store and like, and it's a win-win for both, you know what I mean? Oh, for sure. So, you know, a lot, a lot of companies tend to be afraid to have any type of event, but, um, it's really just, it's not all money. It's just, you know, if you could provide a space, resources, like I said, it's not, it doesn't just yeah, yeah. narrow down to like dollars. It's just, right. hey, man, I have this amazing space. I think you guys would do super great. Come check it Come out. Do it. See what you could do. So, yeah. um, you know, we need more companies like that. Even Nike, even Nike, Raining yeah. Champ. Or, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have wisdom that's going to fuck with us, like low key. And, um, you know, um, yeah like, still it takes more though yeah i get it no for sure man just keep keep pushing don't stop don't stop sure. you know appreciate whatever it. you know there's don't i hope you don't feel the lack of support vancouver's showing up more and more and more and more so yeah you know don't ever feel a lack of support and the, you know companies will come companies yeah. will come it, it, it'll right now maybe you don't have the leverage but you know the longer you don't sit at the table the higher your price goes up and That's you know it. like the yeah. the more the longer you are a grassroots movement the more leverage you have and and the more you know staying power you have yeah right the longer your climb the longer you know the longer your ascent the longer you're at the top right so That's it. i mean that's some you know, patience is, patience is key. Patience is a virtue. I mean, that's yeah. something as a young man, I try to instill every day and learn every day, but I, I can, I know it can be frustrating at times and, you know, we, you. we all have our creative outlets that we want to have flourish. But, you know, again, you know, you're an athlete, man. Work at your craft. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Work at keep your craft. Working. Practice makes perfect, man. That's yeah. It. For that's sure, dope. man. For sure. Hey, yo, I got to say, uh, you guys have an amazing thing going on here. Appreciate it's you, man. Super dope. Like dope. I respect that, and thank you for like showcasing uh, the city how it needs to be showcased. It's dope. I appreciate it's you. Well man. needed, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, we we just want to be a platform for you know talented and, and wholehearted individuals to come and express their thoughts and expand on things like you have today and yeah. and deep dive on 
you know, whatever they have going on and, and further progress their thoughts and, and, you know, be a, be a think space really, you know, to try to try to progress their thoughts and then to put that energy out there. You know, I don't mean to get too, you know, woo woo on you, but you know, mm. to do put that energy out in the universe and, sure. and, and physically or, or virtually Manifest. put it out on the internet, you yeah, know, like yeah. let's get it out here. The amount of DMS that we get is crazy yeah. and it's, and it's, it's growing. We, we, we have been lucky. I, I use the word luck. We put a lot of work into this too, but God's plan, you man. know, like we, yeah, we've yeah. been lucky, it's you know, we've, we've gotten some, some, some great organic reach. We've gotten some great reposts. We've gotten a lot of awesome people reach out our guest list guys, like listeners, man, just wait, just wait till episode 20. Yeah, like we yeah. got, I can't we, wait. We yeah, got yeah. some stuff for you. If you yeah. thought the first 10 episodes were some, just wait till the next 10 and then wait till the 10 after that. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll be water and continue to grow and, the thing that we're most proud of was that is that we can get you back. Like, you know, you know, what if we get, you know, we'll get flip out here. What are you with them or whoever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, whoever it may be for sure. And we can build on these grassroots movements and put them together in a way and, and maybe showcase what it is, like things that we truly believe about. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm a community to the core. So it's like, to Amazing. me, I don't, you know, why do you know, why, man, why do you know if Beyonce has kids but you don't know about the Made Art Show. Why? Yeah, why, yeah, why, yeah. Why, yeah no doubt. No why, doubt. Right? Why? Why do you yeah. know that Cardi broke up with what's his name when yeah, when you when you you, you, about, you yeah. ain't never like gone down and got a cut at one of our local yeah, barber shops? Yeah. Like, why do you know these things? But you have no idea that nude vodka is coming up, and all of a sudden you That's just instead I'm you're saying. buying hey y'alls. Like, why? Why are you not aware? <laughs> Shout right? out like, to nude vodka though. Yeah, for sure. no, hundred yeah, yeah. percent. Like, why do you not know these things? These are things that should be at the forefront of your mind because you are part of the community. So if they bring value, you bring value. We uplift together. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to talk about ethical investment? Well, that's exactly what it is. We're bringing our community up, yeah. and you don't want to. You want to talk about getting out of a, um, a machine, a social cog. Like this is how we do it. So let's. I mean, listen. Christmas is coming up. Go donate to a charity. Like, yeah, that's, Christmas coming up. Go, go get, go, go, go to a made art show. Purchase, and a, I purchase, a, purchase a piece, piece of you know what I mean? whatever, and give it to you to your mother, your sister, yeah. your brother, whoever it is. Like, go get them a self hired tea. Go like put that money in the community, and not just in Vancouver, especially if you're in. Uh, Victoria, if you're in Courtney, if you're on Hornby, if you're in Tofino, wherever it is, like these companies see that um, that economic stimulus even more. Yeah. So there's no reason for you not to do it. And the more I think we're so individualistic, the more that you know the community wins, the more that we win in turn. That's a like fact. That's, it's just it's physics. It's how it works, right? We've that's, seen this in other markets. We yeah, can, absolutely. It's possible. You know. Well said, man. I don't know. For I sure. I have the answers, man. But hey, man. Yeah, that was a great talk, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate your time, yeah. man. We'll, we'll have you back for sure. And for sure. Uh, uh, where can get, when can people get you on your socials? Uh, yeah, you can find me at Icy Touch, I C Y T O U C H. And uh, you can follow also the Made page, it's Made Art Shows. Beautiful. All in one. So M A D E. Go get that. A R T S H O. W-S. It's not that hard for you motherfuckers. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had to, so to kind of like <laughs> write it down and shit. No, 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 but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got you for sure. So and uh, go see a, go see a Lions game. Yeah, come check me out. Like the next, I think uh, the season's over now, but the next season, next season, uh, come find me. Come 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 say what's up. Yep. dance with me. Um, and uh, yeah, just look for me. I'm, I post where I play all the time, so come check it out. And Beautiful. Don't be shy, and um, I'll see you guys at the next events, man. Dope. I see. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate That's a wrap. you, Josh. All right, let's go.